Dude, I mean, high school is the biggest waste of time. No, no, you, no. I, Colleges. No, I no, 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 no. Here's a better question. Is it better to know shit about as opposed to learning the wrong things though? Most people go about their life floating through life. They have no purpose, no goal, no anything, right? And then they tell themselves they want all these things and they never get these things because they've made it a want. But life is interesting because it'll never give you what you want. It'll only give you what you must have. I love Andrew Tate. I think he speaks what's on everyone's mind. A lot of his philosophies, ideas, and beliefs are things that like you would probably as a male or female fundamentally agree with. He has to say it in a polarizing way. Otherwise in this market, you just won't grab attention. Hey everybody, welcome back to the 4 Media Uncut Podcast. Today we have some very special guests for you. We've got Mr. Joel Kaplan, who's been on the podcast before, you know his story, but he brought a different guest with him this time, his business partner, Mr. Sergio Tavares. Yeah, Joel and Sergio actually are uh, one of the biggest names in the coaching space online, and uh, it's pretty cool to see kind of all the things that they're doing, but most importantly in this podcast, we challenge a lot of beliefs between each other. Uh, I, I, Sergio and Joel have a certain way of thinking where maybe Andrew and I have a different way of thinking. And uh, there's a lot of challenges in this episode about opinions on you know education and things like that. And so I'm excited for you guys to listen to this one because it went a little bit outside the boundaries and got a little bit uh, you know, debatey towards the end of it. So hope you guys enjoy this one. Full send it. Send it. Who the fuck is this guy Dude, on the podcast? I don't well, know. we know who Joel is. But who the yeah, fuck well, is this guy? Okay, so we're we're here with Joel Kaplan. You you guys are you guys know Joel, but who, who's who, who is, is this, this guy? Who's this burly man that is that is uh, sitting? How do we find next room time? to fit these? Biceps? I know. You know what's funny? This chair well, is I, almost I, like I feel like I'm not even here today. Well, hold, you know? on, hold, hold on, sitting. Let next me be real. This guy. I literally am trying to like. <laughs> Look, guys, it's a burden to be big. It's a burden <laughs> because I'm like trying to be like, you know, trying to like sit in the corner so it doesn't bother Joel, but I can sense his energy. I can feel he's feel a little uncomfortable. You, you have more of the table. I feel, I feel, good. I feel insecure. Yeah. Right now. Dude, it's funny because you're can wide big, space? but you're yeah. not tall big. Exactly. I'm wide. <laughs> I'm like, like on the camera. They're like, this guy's six six. He's massive. No, I'm, I'm like, no. He's like four foot two. If I, exactly, guys. If I stand up, I'm like, you know. <laughs> he's That's the same height if he up, stands bro. up. Uh, yeah, I, look, I'm gonna stand up real quick. Let me stand, <laughs> he's standing stand, right now. Let me stand up real quick. Let, wait, once, <laughs> let me stand up real quick. He's standing up. I just, <laughs> I just stood up. No, All right, wait, I'm gonna sit back no, down. You're pretty. You're tall. No, I'm like average height, like you know, slightly above average height. But it's what it is is compared to. The width? Yeah, exactly. It just looks <laughs> odd, bro. Exactly. Fucked up. It just it just looks odd. Yeah, right, it's not proportional. So like who's the big guy here? What's your name? My name is Joel Kaplan. <laughs> All right, Sergio. Sergio. Right. Sergio Tavares. So you guys are business partners right now, right? Yeah. You've been business partners for, yeah. for a while. How four many years? years? Four years? Three years? Yeah, nice. like three years. How much money have you guys made together? Uh about is fifteen IRS? to twenty million dollars. Is IRS watching or? We pay our taxes, Eddie. We pay our taxes. Um, yeah, like 15 to 20. But even before then, we, I mean, we weren't officially partners, but like, you know, Joel started an agency before me. I started, actually, we started agency around the same time. And what we would do, this is actually kind of how we, we met. We just call each other late at night because there was no communities like what we have now. We're like, you're going to talk to each other and figure out ideas and go on coaching calls. So dude, we would just call each other. His 11 p.m., my 2 p.m., my 2 a.m., I should say. And we would just exchange ideas and you were in new york right in new york yeah, it was yeah. two hour difference so it would be your 1 a.m but yeah yeah you know what's interesting though <clears throat> so there was a period of time we made like five or six months where we kind of went our separate ways yeah not like through not through like malice or an issue or it just went off we were just in grind mode i went off scaled the agency joe went off scaled the agency we came back and we realized we kind of scaled it the same way without really knowing it it was just like more of the pieces were the same than otherwise and so uh, we decided to partner because we have complementary skills. And then what did you do exactly? What was your partnership? We started the world's greatest coaching program for online entrepreneurs called Agency Lab. What do you mean online entrepreneurs? Walk me through. Walk me through here. Come All on. Right, give Eddie. us some juice, bro. All right, Eddie. You come like, across. You fucking whispering I'll tell, and shit. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll, like, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. It's the steroids you're wearing juice. off. <laughs> give him a fucking needle, bro. Eddie, I'll, I'll tell you how it works. You, 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 so... The natural progression for people who are looking to start an online business, they'll come across a uh, an ad, a course that's maybe 997 or whatever, and it has big, bold promises with lack of fulfillment on it. And so maybe you take the course, but you're convinced that you're trash. 
It's like everyone else is succeeding but you because you're not part of the sphere yet, right? Everyone is succeeding but you, and maybe it's some drop shipping thing, maybe it's some marketing agency thing, whatever it is. And uh, you probably grind for 18 months, maybe two years, and you get no results. And then you need more hands-on coaching to fill in the gaps that the course that you initially thought, that you initially bought, was going to fill in. Those are the type of people that we normally work with. Like they've already been at it for a year or two. Uh, they're committed to actually ma- do, building a real business, not just they have like, a foundation. Uh, or they have c- to. I mean, it's two fucking years, man. Like something's maybe, gotta be maybe, there. maybe foundation, but more so they're committed. Like if point. I don't know how to run ads, would you guys take me? <clears throat> I've, yeah, I don't think foundation is the. It's not even fun. Most people who come to us actually don't have foundation. Would you agree? Yeah, I think most people out there are struggling much more than all of us realize. It's even the people that seem to be successful, um, most of them aren't as successful as they might appear on the outside. So I think there's a lot of people that have been at it for one to two years and really haven't made much progress for various reasons. Maybe the lack of resources. I think that's a big one. I think most entrepreneurs start businesses way too early on. They should have more money saved up. Um, I think another one maybe is... um, Accountability. A lot of entrepreneurs are just doing it on their own, so they're not 100% all in. But they come to us kind of one foot in, one foot out. They're committed to doing the business, but they're not fully all in. And I think that's when we give them the the boost to get to the next level. So yeah, I don't think it's a matter of fund. I would say mo- you know foundation <laughs> skills. I mean business. Maybe you need like uh, one of, one of the most proven skills: sales, marketing, whatever. Maybe you need to have an acquisition system in place. Most people who come to us don't who come to us don't have that in place. I think more than more than foundation, it's like they made a decision. They're, they're going to do this. That's what it is. It's like a decision. And if you look at the the root definition, the Latin root definition of decision, it means to cut off. It's like I've cut off all other options. I'm going all in. That's usually who we look for. You don't have to have the foundations in place just yet. That's what we come in for. So what do you teach them? Um, so the foundations of business is actually what we teach them. So things like how to acquire a customer, uh, on through paid ads, which is an acquisition system that's, you know, scalable, how to build out a sales team, how to build out a client success team, how to fulfill on your promises to the market, how to, uh, scale the operations from a, you know, team perspective, leadership perspective, et cetera. And then ultimately, uh, what do you want to do with the business? Are you going to use it as a cash cow? And if, if so, you need to have someone in place to be able to run it or you're looking to sell it. And if that's your, that's your move, then you have to build a little bit, a little bit differently. Yeah. But like, how did you get that experience to do so in the first place? Like you guys started an agency. I know Joel's why story. Why don't we go way back? That's what I'm saying. I know Joel's story. Like how did you get All right, into- Eddie, you want my story? Let's start with high school. I don't know if you know, Eddie, but I'm a, I'm a high school dropout. Really? I, dude, I, I didn't even, and I was pretty good. Like I was getting like A's and B's, but I had like all these side hustles and making money and all this crap. Like what? Um, well the first business I built was, uh, I mean, it wasn't even a business. It was more like a side hustle. Dude, I used to train uh, like high school kids, maybe people a little, a little bit older than me. Like, maybe I was like 14 years old. Maybe they're like 16, 17 years old, but they're like from Long Island. And that's the wealth, the wealthy area. They could afford to like, their parents could afford to pay for coaching. I'd come in, I would pitch their parents on like, hey, let me help your son make it to the major leagues. I was definitely overpromising. For, for <laughs> It was for baseball? baseball? Well, because I always wanted to be a baseball player. That was like mm. the thing I was like, like, dude, I was that guy like 12 years old. I would wake up six in the morning walk like an hour with big backpack and bats and gloves and not get home until like 10 p.m and do it all over the next day but um my area didn't have a team so uh i would have to like walk an hour to do it and then they found out the location i was in because i was i was gaming the system i would say oh i live over there with my friend and here's their address and blah 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 so that worked for a little bit and i was like you know captain of the team worked my way up did the whole thing but then when i got to high school my school, the entire school, like averaged an F or something for like a semester. It's been crazy. So they pretty wow. much shut down all sports teams. Mm. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, how do I? What? what? Are we it's just so going to skip dumb. over that? The whole school averaged an F? Yeah. It might have been for like a semester or something. There's definitely something wrong with the school. Like, So they were like, hey, 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 let's, let's kill the basketball program. Let's no, focus dude. on the grades <laughs> here. No, dude. So it, 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 it wasn't even, it, it's funny because it wasn't even That's that, wild. it wasn't even that bad of a school. It was more like. <laughs> That once, I don't know what it was. It happened to be my freshman year in, in uh, high school. So I was like, all right, well, I'm already making money doing like little side hustles and all this stuff. And the side hustles to answer your question, um, I would like, it was like these 
16, 17 year olds, I would just basically pitch their parents on like, hey, let me come in and train your kid and I can help him, you know, get to the big leagues or whatever. I would leverage the fact that uh, I've been doing it for a while. I have the connections in like the MLB space or whatever. So I was like, and I was kind of over promising guys. I was like a kid. We know, we know. Just I was right. a kid. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. College dropouts, one thing. High school dropout, whole nother thing. Like, how did that go with the parents or parent? It's going to sound nuts, but dude, when I was like 12. I basically just told my mom, like, I'm just doing whatever I want. Like, it sounds nuts, but that's kind of like how it went. Uh, I just, <laughs> dude, it sounds <laughs> guys, wild. I, I, the first, like, it's true. The first few years that Sergio would tell me the stories about his childhood, I wouldn't believe him. <laughs> I thought, I thought, I'm being honest. I, I told my mom to shut the fuck up, and that's what she did. <laughs> no, I, I, I really was like, how is this actually possible? Sergio is one of the most, um, uh, with EQ and IQ, your, your, your EQ is probably the highest of any male that I've ever encountered ever. You are insanely good with people, and I truly believe that it comes from the fact that when you were a child, when you were growing up, you had to step up as the leader of the family, as the father figure of the family at such a young age. And I've literally verified all this information with Sergio's family, which is wild, but it's like- Yeah, so uh, dropped out. I kind of like hustled two years in, did like, you know, little side hustles, things like that. And uh, I still wanted to play baseball because I was still like trying to get on teams and like all these whatever. And, uh, and so I went off and got my GD. And Wait, GD is separate than. Yeah, it's like a. I'm kind of confused because I thought GD was a high school degree. It's like a. It's like a high school equivalent. It's like a high school diploma, but without. You don't have to do all the credits. You just like take a test, and if, and you, if pass, you pass the test, like, yeah, okay, you're you're probably smart. You're as smart, smart as enough. A, uh, called you're not high an idiot. Graduate, yeah, yeah, like, correct. You're good. Why the fuck do we go to high school? Exactly. Dude, trust bro. me, I know. It's actually so dumb. Trust Dude, me. High school is the biggest waste of time. No, 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 no. Colleges. No, I no 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 no, no. I I I truly like if you actually look at your return on time, what do most people do in high school? Here's what high it, school develops though: social ability. But I, I would agree. argue you could do that outside of school. Yeah, I would argue not I actually, not I actually, to the extent of school does. If you're actually you're participating in extracurricular activities, you're in clubs, you're in sports, you're doing things with people. Like it does not build that. Like. Even relationships with women like are way different in high school as opposed to middle school, as opposed to college. Like that is a bridging ground for a lot of people. Like I would not, I would not be the player I was in college or even have such success with women if I didn't go through my high school phase of understanding how to socialize with women because I didn't do that at a, wouldn't you, you know, I, a relationship scale in middle school. Don't like, you believe I, that you, that could have been, because I don't know if you guys. I, no, because how am I going to. Middle, school, bro, middle how, school. How in, No, even in high school, bro. If I'm not in high school, in what, in what world am I going to be surrounded by 500 people my age? In yeah. what situation? I, I, I agree with that. Like, I'm going to get a job somewhere. They're not going to be my, they're like, I, I'm not going to have to understand people. That's like fair. That. That's I fair. actually believe that. I saw my first job out of college was I did marketing and sales for an education technology company. And I went to hundreds of high schools all across the country. And I worked with the teachers, I worked with the students. And what I learned being in the school system is that it's pretty, you can't actually fix it. A lot of people are trying to fix the education system as we know it. You can't fix it from within. It is, even the teachers are clocked out. Even the principals are like, this is kind of fucked. We're just going to do our best here, but it's kind of fucked. Mm -hmm. I believe it's so bad that it's actually a bigger scam than college. I think high school. Like as far as return on your time. Yeah. I've, are you I've, spending so much time in there and it's like, what did you really learn? Like for in, example, the, in the, in the for classes example, themselves. The, there's there's one, of my, one of our clients, his name is Grace, uh, not Grayson, uh, Ben. Name is Ben. He runs a Cairo agency. He's doing about 20K a month. He's in high school. And I ask him, do you just feel like you're wasting your entire life all day long? And he's like, yeah, for pretty much every single class except study hall and gym, there's infinitely better things that I could be doing with my time. Now, does everyone, would everyone be in the same shoes as him and feel that way? No. Nah. 
Probably not. But for a lot of people that are completely disconnected, I do believe that high school is a scam and we all kind of just accept it. Those are the biggest scams in the world are the ones that we just kind of accept because they're ex social, they're norms. social norms. Then we'll just take it back again and say middle, middle school is a scam. We'll see. Cause like by the time I'm in fifth grade, I pretty much know everything I need to know about fucking biology, chemistry, math, like to I survive in the regular world. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I was saying. talking about that today. I'm like, I was like the one thing I was like, the Pythagorean theorem, I've used it a couple of times in real life. Everything I use that else, all the time, Loki. Right? Yeah, right? It's the only one. No one was believing me earlier. Right, I was the like, one. That is. the Pythagorean theorem, I'm like, a I'll, I'll take that one. Everything else, I'm like, I wouldn't need to know that. There was a, uh, a, a, I, don't, I don't remember the study, so don't quote me on this, but there was a study that I remember seeing uh, that said people are happiest in middle school uh, during like your, your development years. You're happier in middle school than you are in high school. Yeah, because you don't know shit about fuck, bro. That's why. <laughs> yeah, you're just happy you're just go lucky. Going, yeah, and then you, mom and drops and you and off. And then in high school. But, but, <laughs> and then, but and isn't and it better to know shit? And then pizza and, for lunch today. And, and, and then you get to three o'clock, you walk outside. And then you get to high school <laughs> and you, you literally. <laughs> Am I wrong? Here's a better question. Is it better to know shit about fuck as opposed to learning the wrong things, though? Because high school oftentimes teaches you the wrong, the wrong, things. The wrong things. What wrong things, though? What am I learning that's wrong in high school? Right. Uh, okay, so a lot of people... Don't get me wrong. The lessons I'm learning and fucking learning physics and chemistry every year for seven years is definitely a waste of my time. But, like, yeah. let me put a perspective. Wait, let me ask you Let me ask you a different question. Yeah. Who would you be if all of those hours that you spent... I would probably or, or, fucking Jeff on, Bezos' hold on. business partner. Who, I got you. Who, I understand who, who would we all be if instead of spending five hours a day learning things that we hated and completely clocked out on, we instead spent it either experiencing things that we actually cared about or okay. learning things that we were interested in. Mm -hmm. Would we be significantly farther along in our lives? Financially, yes. What about spiritually? What about emotionally? What about- I, I'm not sure. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you this. My deepest and most trustworthy relationships come from my middle school and my high school years. Those, those are relationships that I've now had for 15 years because I've maintained them through high school, middle school, high school, college. They can't be replaced. Social skills, leadership skills, those all came from those things as well. Like, let me let me compare. We're three brothers. I'm the oldest, middle, youngest. Middle tried to not go to college. I forced him to go to college. I said, I don't care if you're going to play video games all day. That's what he does for a career. I still want you to go and, like, live on campus and then still do that. He has social skills, okay? I have the most social skills. He has the second most social skills. The third brother, due to my middle brother's success financially in doing gaming, he said, hey, I'm skipping college. And my parents were like, cool, fuck it, give it a shot. His social skills are dramatically, dramatically lower than both of ours because he didn't actually attend college. And even though he's progressing his career. But do you think college was the factor? I, I, I think the social could, aspect could, of college it was. Could be, it could be his. I'm up. not talking about learning. I'm not talking about anything. I'm talking about the social aspect. What at the same time, bro? I'm not saying my uh, my classes were definitely a waste of time. But let's look at the actual number. How many credit hours were you guys taking? 12, 15, 12 hours a week, fifteen hours. A week. That's fucking nothing, bro. We know that. I spend more time in the gym than 12, 15 hours a week. So like anyone that's like, oh, I went through college and it fucking I couldn't do anything because I went to college. No, you're just being a fucking bitch, bro. I fucking started an entire company, signed exclusivity agreements with the biggest supplement companies in the world, went to college, was in a fraternity, had a fucking eight pack, was able to do it all because I was in a college environment because it pushed me to be better than all these how, other how people. How many, how many hours huh? do you, you think? I was extremely social, but I also, dude, if you're an alpha, you fucking sit in a college campus and you say, I'm fucking, I can do better than everyone here. See, but you're an alpha. Most yeah, that's people that saying. go to college don't have, guys, most people go to college they, unlike high school, I think high school, you have more cliques, more groups, et cetera. Maybe because well, they are more your age group. But in college, they just fly by the classes in and out. So like if they have three classes that day, they go three classes and then they're leaving. In high school, maybe you're a little bit more social. And maybe you could develop the social. Which is why I'm saying high school, you can't say was but, like. Yeah. We how many? How many? this soon. Because this is, <laughs> we've been talking about for some I, I like this. This is good <laughs> It's stuff. good though. It's good though. Um, I feel like we always talk business and there's so much more to life and just business. And I feel like maybe this isn't the typical podcast, but you know, part of me does wish that people got to know me at least for who I am, not just, and I, I've, I've said this before, not just what I accomplish. It's like, cool, you've got millions of dollars, sweet. Um, the, the, there's something to be said about being a multi-dimensional human being. If you're just 
if you just have opinions about business, like that's cool. But do you have opinions about politics? Do you have opinions about education? Do you have opinions about science? Do you have opinions about other things? So, um, I, I, I do like this topic. I, I, I wanted to share a, a, a different potential, uh, way to look at it. Let's say that it's like the tenth way to look at this. <laughs> just, I do. I I, 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 I actually think I actually think that high school is worse than college. If you take if you take the amount of time that you spend in high school, let's do the math. Let's say you wasted five hours a day. Yep. Five hours a day times five. That's mm-hmm. twenty five hours a week. Yep. Hundred hours a month. Twelve months. So that's nine months. Nine four years. Nine, okay. So thirty six. Times 100, 3,600 hours. Gotcha. That, that's for how many years? Four. Four years. Okay. Imagine if you invested all that time into learning or deve- learning something that you were passionate about or developing a skill around something that you cared about. I agree, but the reality is, this is my last point, the reality is most people at that age don't have the guidance, direction, or even understanding of what it is that they want. And so having 3,600 hours, I might have bet that I wasted 2,800 of them. I'll, but you wasted 3,600 by going to the college or high school. Did I, though? Because so, I developed all these other soft you skills. Could, it's, the sa- it's, for the sa- it's the same reason why I don't read books. It's because it's just knowledge with no, no applicability to it. I'd rather just go apply and then learn the same information I would have gone gotten from the you book. You don't read books? I don't read books. Bro, you're missing out on so much. <laughs> I don't read books. You can, dude, yeah. or, 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 or if I am going to read a book, it's super specific around a very, like, tangible topic I'm trying to pick up. I don't read books. Yeah, because, exactly. But you, I mean. I, I haven't read a book in I don't know how long. And it's because I'd rather just go either pay someone who's done it for that information, shortcut the process, or I'd rather go do it myself, pick up the information by feedback that, I, you know, me having done it. And then it's like, what do I need the, what do I need the book for? I mean, the book shortcuts a lot of time, bro. I think I th- look. I'll tell you this: the people who built the biggest businesses, they don't build fucking online courses. They write books about them. That's Just true. Put it in perspective. You want to learn about a trillion like a dollar company? Closer. You read a book. You don't fucking go watch a course. You want to learn about a guy who makes three hundred k a month? Or you pay on someone. the internet? Or you get a meeting you go with watch them. a course. Or you get a. We've had a, we had like four meetings with like four different billionaires. What the last is a meeting? A meeting is not going to cover the amount of information that you can cover in three hundred pages of a book. It's just impossible. We're gonna like high school first. We're like gonna debate high school. Fuck high school. Fuck books. Because I just a thumbnail. I just don't believe in books. Eddie versus I, Joel. I, I don't <laughs> believe in books. Here's my. It's it, it's bro. I'll tell you the problem. You're gonna back to the back to the time thing. Let me just let me just let me explain. You're gonna. So you most people aren't as smart as you to choose the right book to pick in the first place. Well, that's what it's it, about, bro. It's like watching a movie. You gotta pick why you're watching the why you're reading the book. Or be intentional. If you're reading Ratatouille every day. Like, yeah. Why don't you just be? But why stupid. don't you just be intentional? You know, um, you guys have heard the the, the the quote, which is like, if I had to ch- knock down a tree, I'd spend like the first. If I had three hours knocked down a tree or some shit, I would spend the first two hours sharpening the axe. Why don't you spend the first little bit being intentional about the problem you're trying to solve? Instead of like just feeding yourself with more information, be intentional around the problem you're trying to solve, and then spend the last little bit purposely. But I am. That's why I'm reading a book. Yeah, but you're you're. you're I know f- what problem I'm trying to solve. Let me let me give an example. <laughs> I want to build an outbound sales team. Yeah. I fucking dare you right now to open the internet. Anyone listening to this, YouTube, Google, whatever the fuck you can possibly do to figure out how to build an outbound sales team. You can't find enough info. But I that's fucking such a, that's such a direct problem that you're trying to exactly, solve. Exactly, exactly. But I have to reading, bro. But listen, uh, listen millionaire listen. habits. Jojo, jo, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Or like, what? What is that book? Out, the the but, key principles of success. That I don't hear me. Remember. Hear me out. I, I searched the fucking internet, bro. Not like a fucking local library. The internet, YouTube, Google, everywhere. Like I fucking please try to search and try to f- come up with someone who actually has information out there of actually how to build a successful outbound sales team. Nothing. Okay, I'll, I'll I buy a book on Amazon, twelve dollars. It's the guy who built Salesforce to a hundred million dollars a year through outbound sales. See, that's a book that I would read because that's specific. That, exactly, but, but, but that's but, that's my point. But you wouldn't it be better? Book. Wouldn't it be better because th- guys, the book has marketing. There's also you got to fill it. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be better just to pay the guy for an hour of his time and say, hey, what do I need to know and what's fluff? And you get the same information, more direct to the source. Or you've he also can give built you his blueprint. You've also built a, but then you can that read that is condensed as well. But then. But then you've also built a relationship with this guy, and so if you have one-off you questions, you have the money to talk to this guy if, though first. If, <laughs> dude, no, you'd, you'd, you'd be surprised. Be surprised. You'd, you'd be surprised. We've how, got we've gotten more meetings with billionaires than we have for free than yeah. millionaires. For example, 
when we were stuck at the million a month mark and we couldn't quite reach it, I read, I, I uh, DM'd a lot of entrepreneurs that were at a million a month. Everyone was like 10 K for an hour, mm -hmm. pay me all this money. I reached out to a billionaire literally, uh, two weeks ago. And I said, I'd be happy to pay you for your time. The guy gives me a meeting for free and I ask him why he's like, cause no one else reached out. Exactly. So I actually think the people at the very, very top are much more accessible than the people that are a few steps ahead of you. Because you know what it is? It's like I, the, I like that perspective. It's like the middle, the middle. It still doesn't change my thought about a fucking book. All right. The middle <laughs> ground has this. It's, not, it's not here. Uh, let, let me try to maybe bring everyone together. It's, uh, it's not that we're anti book. I truly believe that most people fill up their brain with more and more and more knowledge in, in to, to excuse themselves from going out and taking more action. So most books to most people are a waste of time and they're reading books that are not going to directly help them solve a problem that they have today. So they're going to read something like millionaire habits or the morning formula, something that doesn't really even matter when they haven't even taken any little bit of action. I think books at your level, for example, that are more generic, big picture, visionary, are actually going to be very valuable because that's where you are at right now. Most of your time should be spent or thinking, so strategizing, things like that. But at the very beginning, for most entrepreneurs, and most entrepreneurs are broke, most entrepreneurs aren't millionaires, they shouldn't be wasting their time with more reading, more reading, more consumption. Why, but what if it's the, what if that's what they're missing to get to the next step? That's what I'm not understanding. Like, like, yes, right, but you're, you're, I'm giving you a scenario right now because I'm trying to build an outbound sales team. But like, let's take it back to college when I didn't know shit about anything. And I read Think and Grow Rich. And I understood that, oh, if I thought positive thoughts, good things would happen. Like that is a compound effect. That's great. Me, See, me, me understanding that 10 years later has a massive impact. There's on my a life. few, 10 years earlier, my whole there's life. There's been books that have definitely changed my life. There, there's a few foundational books. I think every human being on the earth should read, but you don't but, know what they are until someone reads them and tells you. So it, like, it, yes, if sometimes but, you gotta be the person to read them. If cause no mm, one's going to tell you cause no one's read that book. It, if it's also, can, let me say one more thing. Who is the, who is the, <laughs> Joel's like, we're we're Joel's like our argument about books. <laughs> Joel's like, I just calculated it. No, but what were you high say? school is a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Um, I think that uh, also who who wrote the book and what was the purpose behind it? For example, if you wrote a book as a what was the last book you read? When two years ago? Uh, fr like front to back, like the no, entire no. book. Uh, uh, 40% of a book. That's about a good point for me to stop reading usually. I'm like, I get it. I get it. Oh, so you don't read the whole book. I don't need to read the whole book. You, exactly. You're <laughs> Eddie, you're But I'm us. seeking something. I'm yeah, seeking it. But see, that's it. different. You're seeking it where most people are blindly Leave following. Yeah. Bro, but most books are repetitive. You get 40% and you're exactly. like, I get the it's fucking not like they're point. blindly following random bullshit. It's just they're saying the same thing you're in different ways. You're just digging it in different ways. And it's deeper. like the 10x rule. Like, have you read that book? I read like the first, I like, read it. I, I read the front read, cover. I, I, I read the yeah, front cover. It's a solid oh, book. Do it 10x. Yo, what do you 10x? That's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're activities. welcome. Everyone watching this podcast. <laughs> you think you need to try twice as hard, but actually it's 10x hard. But, so but we for also, anyone watching this podcast or listening in that's thinking about reading the book 10x, you're welcome. Here, here's the, here's the, 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 the uh, back to what Joel I just saying. saved you about 10 hours. You also have to be, uh, whatever, how many hours? You also have to be careful. So first of all, is the, is the information that's in the book still applicable? That's number one. Cause there's some old books that just don't apply with some of the shit that's going on with today's market. Right. Number two, who wrote the book and with what intention? How many times have you, I understand, but it still doesn't take away that you guys don't read books. Well, 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 I think there's a season of life in which you should read. There's a season for it. You don't think you're in the season right now? No, I'd rather just pay to get What's going to take you from 5 million a year to me, me talking to you, me, me listen to audio books. For, exa for example, for example, right now <laughs> where we're at, what's going to take us to the next, next level is much more about product shaking. Uh, uh, what's up? Go ahead. I was going to say shaking the right hands and like being in the right rooms. Yeah. It's really where you're at, but like, go, go ahead. It, it, it's just, it's, it's you know, what it is, is like, it also, I think it also depends on the type of, like I learn more through doing and seeing it happen opposed to like reading about it. We all do. 
it's so then why not shortcut that process? It's not a shortcut. I can. You're like the guy that goes to IKEA and just starts building, and once he figures out that it's built wrong, he goes to the instructions after. <laughs> literally what I do. Literally what I do. Yeah, that's literally. Stupid. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. That's but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But <laughs> hold on. But most people, most people, if we look at entrepreneurs, if we look at entrepreneurs, most people never actually Don't. start building. Yeah, I'd rather start. You're right. You're right. Hold you're on. Right, you're right. Look. We I've co- we've we've that. coached now thousands of entrepreneurs, and I can tell you the and by the way, thousands and a lot of them are seven eight figure earners. Right? Yes, exactly, so. exactly. We've helped over eighty people, eighty get to a hundred k a month, hundred thousand dollars a month. Out of all those people, the number one thing that I've realized that holds most people back compared to those that do succeed is number one, lack of belief in themselves, and then number two, lack of action. You have no idea how many people we've had in our program that they are two months in and they still haven't done anything. And then I have to yell at them. And I'm like, yo, if you don't start building the damn Ikea piece of furniture, you're not going to get exactly. anywhere. Stop reading the instruction manual. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Stop rather, reading you, the fucking instruction manual. You have to just start building the piece of furniture. You need to know enough. You need to know enough. I want to say, I think we're the only people who attended your course and never attended a coaching call. You're pr- but you took Bro, massive action. See, you're, you you're, you're, you're proving That's the point, though. You're proving the point, right? Here's what I did. I read the table of contents, and I said, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. I need these things. We watched them in one day, and then we said, run. Yeah, and maybe if you had a specific problem, you'll ask a specific exactly, question. Exactly, exactly. Then see, I would, yeah. But see, that's the Most way I think. people lack the, the belief in themselves to actually go out and take action. Yep. I'd rather just go to the source, have a specific problem. Why waste time spending three hours reading a book that I could have a three hour conversation with someone, get direct to the source, and maybe it's more updated, useful information. Maybe maybe it's more relevant to my specific situation, right? Whereas books are, they're just cookie cutter because they have to make a cookie cutter for it to work. Let, let me give you an example. I had someone in the program who was stuck for about one or two months, didn't take any action. He had consumed a lot of the material, a lot. You guys took a lot of action when you came in. This person hadn't taken any action. This is what I told them on that coaching call. I just need you to send one message. Just reach out to one business owner. That's it. Nothing else. I told them, stop watching the course. Stop attending the coaching calls. Stop doing anything else. I just need you to commit to one message. And then I had them do it right then and there on the call with me. That person is called Bill Gates, by the way. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. Um, Again, I'm not saying, I'm not anti-books. I'm just saying be intentional with the books. But... What's the next controversial topic? Yeah, so let's we covered high yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. We were college, arguing here. Books. We got to, like, well, yeah, let's, let's. Well, no, you got to tell us. I mean, so we, we branched off of high school. So you left high school. How about, I, mean, uh, I dropped, I went to college and then dropped out like a few credits short of. Oh, you went to college because you got a GED. You got, Why got, the fuck do we go to high school? Bro, I don't know. Dude, I'm going to leave. I don't, you see, <laughs> I'm leaving. But, but said see, this whole time. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, like, only because of GED. Peace out. <laughs> Bro, Just yeah. Kidding. You're telling me I could have gone to college on like at like 14. You could have legitimately gone to college at like 14, 15. That's yeah. crazy. Just Bro, take, college take, is a business. They want your money. Do yeah. they really care how old you are? <laughs> legitimately, They're like okay. So oh, actually, well, you're gonna give us 80 grand. We'll so, take it. So the, I, my my so I went to I, I um and I was I was actually a pretty good student in college because I don't know I just. I felt like I had to be. I don't know. This is like maybe trying to make up for the lack of high school success I had, whatever. So I was pretty. I was getting pretty good grades, and I'll never freaking forget. There was this teacher. She like saw that I was not paying attention. I was like on my laptop, probably like sending a message, trying to close a deal or something. I don't know what I was doing. And she looks at me. She's like, "What are your thoughts?" And I was like, "You know, like the Scooby, like the, <laughs> like the, like, <laughs> the, like my thoughts on what?" He's like, "What are your thoughts?" And she started like, "Yes, I noticed you weren't paying attention, but what are your thoughts?" And she was trying to catch me, and I was like, "Hey, ma'am." Um, I don't think this is for me. I got up, closed my bag, and walked out the door. I never went to college again after that. I just said, it's not for me. The moment that she's, I don't know, something about the way she said it. It was just like, so what are your thoughts? And I was like, my thoughts on like, I didn't, this is what I tell myself. I didn't tell this out loud, but what are my thoughts on a rele- irrelevant topic that's never going to be applicable to me in life when I'm doing work right now, which you should be applauding because this is going to further me and this crap has nothing to do with anything. What are my thoughts on the useless, th- useless thing? My thoughts are I'm wasting my time here. Peace. And I left. And then I went back. Like a few credits short. Or like I don't know, like a semester short or something. Wow. Oh, you were that close. It wasn't like freshman year or anything. No, like I think I put in like two or three years of like just making it happen. But I don't know. 
also a waste. Now, I, I'm not anti-college, by the way, because I think I do think for some people, college is applicable. Like, if you're trying to be a lawyer, I'm pretty anti-college. Yeah, if you've got to be, if you're going to be a lawyer, doctor, lawyer, <laughs> it depends. What else? Academic. If you want to be a scholar, yeah. Like, but. if you want to further the research of yeah. a specific field, I think that's valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for the most for most people, what you're trying to do, like, I know people. That spent eighty thousand dollars on college education, and they spent eighty dollars on a online program, and make an exponential return. Yeah, a exponential return. We all know people who've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on college and not made anything. Yeah. So, so what happened after college? Uh, that's actually when I started the agency. I was like in the process of. Why'd uh, you start an agency, like, dude? It was by, I was I was convinced, guys. I was freaking Ty Lopez. I thought I came <laughs> up. I thought I came up with SMMA. So here's what I did. So I, I, that's so funny. I swear, I thought I came up with the term, not the term, not the actual SMMA, but like the business. He's model. like, yo, I revolutionized marketing. <laughs> Here's what I did. So, so, He's like so, the guy that didn't read any of the books, so he didn't know that that was already a thing. Bro, I had literally, literally no idea. Look, look, look. I'll tell you exactly. I'll, 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 I'll tell you guys exactly what happened. He's like, I haven't logged online yet. <laughs> I'll tell you. Let me explain. But he's been taking massive Let action, exactly. making money. I was exactly, exactly. So the so, jokes on everyone else. So I th you gotta. At this point, I was making money selling things willy nilly, right? But I had no structure. I know what the heck I was doing, if I'm being honest. What was your like service? Like you and what oh, kind of agency? I'll, I'll tell you that right now. So the school I went to was in this Manhattan in the city. And I used to walk down, I think it was Fifth Avenue. Uh, I was just knocking on doors, picking up clients. Think about this knocking on doors, picking up clients. And it was this doctor. His name is Dr. Uh, Joseph Polber, which is a celebrity plastic surgeon. I knocked on the door. The girl says, um, Hey, like you can't come in. This is like per appointment only. He's like, he's booked like a month out. And I was like, Okay, I go to the back. I knock on the door again. A different person uh, checks in. She's like, uh, what is this? Like, you like Jehovah's Witness? Get out of here. And I was like, <laughs> that was that, she's actually, she actually did say that. And I was like, yeah, if only you knew my, my childhood. Um, but anyway, I went back three days consecutively. Boom, boom, boom. Just every single day. Like maybe like four days actually. I just banging on the door, this guy's door. Because I just wanted to work with him. And uh, I like, weasel my way in. Uh, I sat down with the, the front desk. I said, what is it going to take for me to get a meeting with this doctor? And uh, she says, well, I guess like he has lunch in like, you know, an hour and a half. If you just come back in an hour and a half, I'll be I was like, cool. I'll be here in 60 minutes. And I just came back. And first thing I said to him is, cool. My name is Sergio. I'm going to be your new uh, like revenue growth partner, blah, blah, blah. I didn't know anything about marketing. I didn't even know the term digital marketing at the time. <laughs> Nothing. So we sat down, but I was always good at sales. So I was always going to talk to people, asking questions, et cetera. So we went to his office. We spoke for like maybe 20 or 30 minutes. And I was just asking, like, what do you need help with? What's going on right now? I was like, oh, I, you know, people have been telling me I should do Facebook ads. I was like, dude, that's exactly what we do. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, D -d did you like, did you know I was coming? And he's like, he's, he's, he found it funny or whatever. And uh, I sold them on Facebook advertising for $2,500. I walked out of there with a, like a check, $2,500 check. I never even been on Facebook. If you go back to my Facebook, I was not even dude, on. When I met Sergio, I actually met him on Facebook <laughs> in a Facebook group. Uh, from a mentor that we both had, uh, Nick Robbins, huge shout out to him. He runs an eight figure agency, B Top Local. And when I saw Sergio's profile, I'm like, yo, is, this guy, scam is this guy, uh, what's it but called when people are uh, scammy? They thought no, I, not scammy when they're catfish. I was I like, like, yo, this guy looks like, like a catfish. Too big. <laughs> I look like a catfish because you guys understand. I'm like, yo, this, you know the Facebook profiles where it's just a profile picture and like, Nothing else? Yeah. 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 There's, there's no video and yeah. there's no info. That was him. No <laughs> lie. Literally, I mean, literally, that no Facebook. No photos, anything. Legitimately, profile picture. I legitimately made he that. He created it after he signed this doctor. <laughs> I closed this guy and I was like, I, so I go home, like, all like, sorry, I'm on a lot, lot like, that was a month. I'm, gonna, I'm rich. So I go home and I'm like, man, I got to figure out Facebook. I've never even been on Facebook. I got to figure out Facebook ads. <laughs> And you're, uh, you're, you're, you jumped out of the plane and built your parachute on the way down. But, like, but, 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 uh, but you know what, for a lot of successful people, that's, that's kind of what you have to do. Like, yeah. And uh, w w two things I had in mind. <laughs> Number one, I fundamentally trusted my ability to figure it out. I knew I was going to figure it out always. That just had that belief. And number two, I knew I was going to do right by this guy. Cause if I couldn't figure out, if I couldn't figure it out, then I'll, I'll refund him or I'll make sure I could take care of him in some other way, shape or form. Right. Yeah. yeah. I was the same way. Yeah. I was just like, sell it first and then figure it out later. Um, so I went home and I started YouTubing. Uh, Facebook ads, what is Facebook ads, how to do Facebook ads. And then I saw the freaking Ty Lopez ad. And I think like a month later, he like retargeted me or whatever. And I signed up for his thing, but I thought I came up with this. <laughs> he was like, people are telling me to do Facebook ads. And I was like, I, that's what we do, bro. Like, <laughs> I thought I came up with Facebook ads. So it's that, bad. To, so to like fast forward, maybe like two, a year or two after that, Sergio's got his agency. I've got Atlas Digital. We met in Nick Robbins' Facebook group. 
uh, through his coaching program. Or actually, it was actually a course. It wasn't a coaching program. And uh, I reached out to Sergio because I saw him posting a lot of wins in the group through his profile that was sketchy. But I was like, yo, this <laughs> sketchy profile is getting a lot of wins. So I'm going to reach out. And then Sergio ended up uh, hopping on a call with me and sharing a lot. He shared his cold email scripts. He shared his direct mail letter that he was uh, mailing to business owners. And uh, he pretty much were an open book. And that was kind of when our relationship uh, really started. Then after that, we agreed to do a call once a week. So once a week, we would hop on the phone late at night. Uh, you know, I call him at like 11 p.m. Uh, mountain time, which was like 1 a.m. Eastern time. Like and Sergio, Sir, yeah, Sergio's <laughs> like, I don't even know how you do it, but like one in the morning. And uh, I remember literally walking outside of my house late at night, just like in the, in the neighborhood in Colorado, and uh, just being on the phone. And then I get pretty loud on the phone. I remember someone yelling, get off the fucking phone. Because <laughs> <laughs> I would go at like 11 at night and I'm like loud, you know, getting yeah, really yeah. excited. And I was just talking to Sergio. Some guy's trying to sleep like right <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and uh, that's kind of how our relationship began. Then fast forward like a year or two, Atlas Digital was crushing. I launched seven figure agency, which is now called agency lab. Um, you know, our coaching program and consulting business for marketing agency owners. So you sold your agency. Yeah, I did sell my agency. Talk about that. I yeah, can, you haven't I talked about, about it. You haven't talked about that. You've been low key about selling your agency. It's been What's a while. On? You can talk. Yeah, about I, can, it I can talk about it. Um, should I finish the story first? Cause I feel like you guys, yeah, finish the story first. <laughs> I'm like, it's a weird point to end. I'm like, all right, well, me and Sergio used to call each other. <laughs> that was the takeaway. That's the takeaway. <laughs> My neighbors told me to shut up, and I did. I never called them again. Uh, and then, uh, so I, I started Seven Figure Agency, which is now called Agency Lab, which we are business partners in. But what happened was Sergio is incredible at sales, but part of why he's so good at sales is because he's the easiest buyer. So <laughs> for sure, every good salesman buys. Always, I just buy buy everything, guys. right? Actually, so, so I just look for one. I'm like, here. Here's and I knew yeah. I launched Seven FA, a Seven Figure Agency. He's an I'm asshole. like, yo, Sergio's gonna asshole. buy it if I just call. He's him. an asshole. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we even. Got, I don't think we even got on the phone. Joel says, "Hey, I'm I'm launching this thing. You know, I know you need help with some systems." He wanted my. He he knew we had really solid systems, yeah. and he's really good at sales and marketing. He's like, "Let me, I just want to get his systems." So then I'm like. Uh, <laughs> like yo, he just sends me a link. In. He just sends me a link, and he a paid it. Link, and, and I was I'm like, like sure, yo, yeah. I love this guy. I'm like, yo, I love this guy. <laughs> the easiest clothes. But then, uh, the first year of Seven Figure Agency, we had an in-person. Or event. Was he the first customer? Maybe like first ten, because it was someone yeah. that I knew. Like yeah. we were good friends. I knew yeah. he wanted my systems. Mm -hmm. I was probably an asshole about so it. I knew I could make a buck off you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, the question Such is, a but the question is, <laughs> who made more money off of the other guy? Because he ended up. Getting equity in the business. That's true. And we blew That's up. true. In all, purchase. in all fairness, um, well, first of all, I, I just believe if you have, like, this goes back to the books thing, just buy a solution. I, th I thought our systems were actually pretty good. Like, we were enrolling 30 or 40 clients a month. But I knew, like, I've never been a systems guy. I don't even know how to process systems. And I knew that you guys with Jana had your, your, your systems all in. I was like, if I get just one golden nugget from this, we were already doing seven figures plus. If I ever get just one golden nugget from this, the entire investment's worth it. That's how I think about it. It's like same. I just invest. I just I I I I. I'm not saying I blindly invest, but I I. Well, you know, if you could take one thing away, you it's could, worth I don't it. just blindly read books. No, you know? no, no. <laughs> if I could blindly invest, because here's how I see it. I know that if you give me one golden nugget, I'm gonna be able to squeeze the juice out of it more so than someone who hasn't been able yeah, to. Yeah. Like that business went to 350k a month or whatever it was, and it's really all, yeah, dude. Just straight systems. That's all we needed. We were doing like 150, 200k or something. We just needed systems. That's what it was. So. The point is, I know I'll be able to squeeze the juice out of the small golden nugget someone gives me, and that's actually why we don't read books. So, dude, I, I'm sorry. We don't have to. We don't. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm not anti books, but you know, I think uh, courses over books or direct connection. Uh, I over think books. I think Coaching. mentorship mentorship over books. Got for it. Sure. Yep. If someone can take a look at you and your unique situation. And really, of course, I, no one's gonna argue that, bro. That's of course. Yeah. Yeah, but a lot but of people don't. A lot of people the book, are, call the author and just fucking dude, meet up with them. You, you know what? You're 
If everyone did that, though, guy, then, the, then it wouldn't work. But, but no one but does. the fact that no, one, no one does, does makes it's it work. Like, it's like... So, okay. How I'll many, give it a shot, dude. How many girls... Next book I read, I'm like, fuck the book. I'm calling the author. Do you got, I'm doing it. How many girls that are 10 out of 10 get approached? I, I guarantee you it's less than the sevens or the eights. It's the same thing. You find the wealthy, wealthy, wealthy people, the guys that just wrote books because they wanted to leave an impact, not because they wanted to make more money. Those guys will give you a meeting for free. Yep. So I'm uh, calling Bezos tomorrow. I already texted him. There's levels to it. I'm not saying you can get I Bezos. Obviously, Bezos. Bezos no, yeah, yeah. But, but like, like, like we got, and even if you do pay for it, it's like we got a, a meeting with uh, the, the CEO or the, the, uh, owner of Kinkos, it's like a billion dollar company. I think we pay like five hundred bucks for like three hours of his time. Three hours, and guys, and he's gonna come speak at our mastermind. Yes, five hundred. So it's, it's really gonna be like a four hour total. And and he stayed. It was initially an hour long call, but he stayed on because he's like, I've never had anyone ask me for my time, so I feel like I have to over deliver for you guys. So, just a tactic. Just tr test it out. If it doesn't work, I give you a thousand. If if you're let's do it now. If it doesn't if you if it doesn't work, your next problem you're trying to solve. I'll give you a thousand bucks if it doesn't work. Wow. Just do it. Just okay. reach out. I'm not saying hit hit Jeff Bezos up. You're not gonna hit Jeff Bezos, but like be intentional. Sounds good. I'll I'll give it a shot. He just wants a grand. Bro. He just wants a thousand. He's not even gonna he's, he's one of those guys, he's not even gonna read the book. He's, he's not gonna do it. Thousand. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 how'd you sell your agency? What does that process look like? And yeah. why'd you sell it? Because it was making money, right? Oh yeah. I mean, like I removed my Myself, we had a COO in place that was managing all the day-to-day, -day, all the client fires, and it was profiting up to 100k a month. What services were you offering? Uh, Facebook ads for for chiropractors. Um, the big reason why I sold the agency, and I've I've shied away from talking about this because it is a touchy subject. But me and my ex-business partner's relationship went south, so. That's really the the biggest reason why I sold. I think it would have like for personal reasons, for business reasons. I thought the return on my the ROI on my peace of mind was greater than the ROI of the business. Agreed, agreed. But like mm. just as a business partner perspective, like what went we, wrong? We had very different values and we wanted very different things. So my ex business partner really valued lifestyle. He wanted to just he didn't want to keep growing and keep scaling and keep making more and more and more. For him, it was more. I like, can travel. I can, I can travel. I can do my passions. I this can, fulfills my life that I want right now. Yeah. So obviously there's a huge disconnect because I'm trying to drive things forward. I'm trying to scale. I'm trying to grow. And he's trying to chill. He wants. Exactly. And that created a lot of resentment. That created a lot of tension. I was like. You feel like someone's holding you back. That's what it comes down to. Personally holding me back, but also I felt like he was hol he was holding the business back. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm like, I feel like I'm working to give someone else 50% when they're not carrying the same amount of weight that I am. And I'm not saying that he didn't contribute at all, but I don't, it, it was definitely not the same. At that of, point. Definitely not the same amount of weight. Um, I also believe that I drove most of the innovation and my value far surpassed what I was getting. So I started to just get a lot of resentment towards the business and towards him. Um, and, uh, you know, no disrespect to him. I think for me, the decision to sell was primarily dri like 90% driven by the relationship, not by the business, not doing well. You know, I, it was a fantastic business and I think we could have scaled it way farther. You know, I literally just got hit up by someone on Instagram two days ago who said he has a huge chiropractor <laughs> network. He thought I still ran the agency. So as my brand has grown and grown and grown, I think we could have really blown it up. Um, but that's why I sold. And uh, good decision, like financially? I, I, I really don't want to... You don't need to tell me the number. I just No, not even the number. I, let's just say I had way better deals on the table that I was not able to take mm. through some logistical situations and the dynamic of the relationships. I understand. But I had I had some really amazing deals that I had to pass. So did I s still make a 
a good chunk of money for sure. Could I have made two or three times more? Two or three times more? Yeah. yeah. That mm-hmm. sucks. Ouch. But at that point, I was like, I need to. You get. already started on agency lab. Like you were deep into it at that point already. So. And at that point, you had a run I'm away. at the point in my life where, of course, I want to make more money and grow and push myself, but I don't need the money. And I'm having to put myself under severe amount of stress over just extra money. It just felt like I, the, the right thing to do was just to leave and walk away. I don't want, I don't want to speak for you, but I also know that. So, cause this happened to me too. Um, you were trying to scale cause at that, at the time we were already partnered in agency lab and he was trying to not scale agency or Atlas digital, but it's always like meant to still there. It's like in your mind. And I had rolling revenue and that business was doing, you know, a few million a year. So, it's almost like you can only really have one main business that your heart's in. Maybe you could have other people operating the businesses, but I know for us, that was also like a big conversation with around Atlas Digital, which is like, you, you know, because the moment that the moment that you mentally cut ties, I, I saw the shift in your energy. You just felt better. And maybe a couple of months later, you know, we put some systems in place for, with Agency Lab and the, it, it, it blew up. But I also saw the, str- the weight just get off your shoulders the moment you sold. Yeah, I think it was like a bittersweet sale. Like I, th- I really believe that it was valued and it was like we had investors. I literally had a deal in escrow, like letter of intent, everything ready to go. Deal was um, lost, unfortunately, but ultimately in the long run with a peace of mind that I got from it, I think and I really do believe I'll make more money. Um, so it's interesting that you put it that way. <clears throat> what? Like the weight being lifted off. I sensed it. Cause he would call me about it late at night and I'm like, bro, cause you know, I was also, I, I, I actually was not in your situation cause my agency was automated. So it was like, and I, I also didn't kind of care if it was going to grow. I was like, oh, whatever. But I know you were that kind of in the same position as your business, but partner, I didn't have a part. I didn't have a partner. Yeah. So I had no one else to like the way the decision making on. Whereas like, with you, I saw the physical and part of why I started agency lab. Like, I think looking back and looking into my psychology, like what was probably actually happening in my brain, I was looking for a way out, even if I didn't really know it out of my agency, but it was mainly not because the agency wasn't working. It was a fantastic business, like a business that you have a team in place. All the systems are built out, profiting hundred K a month. Are you kidding? Stupid. Like, Why'd you, th- why'd you think it was interesting, the, the positioning? Because it happened to me, but in an opposite scenario, not in a business that I sold, but a business that stole from me, wow. mm. walked away, took a few hundred grand out of my out of my life. Wow. Wow. Yeah. But when it happened, I had two decisions, chase this money legally or remove the entire weight off your shoulders and just go chase bigger with Four Media. Yeah. And I did, and it was, a, I mean... What's your record uh, month in the company? Those thirty days. Mm. What's your what's so the weight gave you the agility to then be able to the weight off give you the agility to then be able to take things to the next level? Yeah, yeah. Not even like guaranteed. Ninety nine point nine percent of people in my situation are chasing that money still from those people because they could have legally. But, but like that mm. battle and that weight. Yes. It's like trying I, to recapture something that you've lost rather than just trying to go get more. Yes. I knew I yes. could I could do this and go get more. I yeah. think for you, the, it's because you, what I know of you, Eddie, is you have a immense amount of self-confidence and you trust in your ability to be able to duplicate, if not 10x what you did in the past. Most people feel like people. I think people innately have this belief that some, if they do have success, it's just a one hit wonder. It's like, oh, damn, I'm, I figured it out. So they, they, like, hold on to this success. Whereas with you, I think you had the confidence. Like, I could do this again. I think that's why it, it uh, you know, it, it worked out with you. But it's an inter- interesting topic. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, like, business partners. Because you and I have, might actually have different um, beliefs around this. I don't know if you guys have business. you have business partners? In- yeah. I actually believe um, when you, you, ha- you have to have at least one business where you didn't have business partners. Like part of, part of the reason, part of what helps me be able to see the business a little bit holistically is I had to scale the business alone. 
So I had to learn the marketing, the sales, the client fulfillment, the opera. I had to figure it out on my own. Whereas when you have partners, it's it's easy to just focus on one side of the business. If you're like the CMO of the company, you're the sales guy of the company, you're gonna focus more on the marketing side and the innovation side. Maybe the other guy's gonna focus on sales and offer, right? Um, and and I, now I believe in partnerships like dramatically because if you wanna go far, you go together, right? If you wanna go fast, maybe you go alone. But I think you do have to experience one business independent of anyone. Just You'll learn more traits. Back to the books thing. You'll learn more traits in that short period of time building things alone. I'd love to hear your, what are your thoughts on partners? I mean, I think partners are something that's super important. Um, I think it it's like, I, I actually, I, um, someone who used to work for you, I try to become a partner with them. Instead of building my own company in that vertical, I'm not going to get too much into the exact details. I think you guys know who I'm talking about. Someone left your company and went and started a different kind of company. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, hey, let's, like, we have the resources here to do this together. Let's just become partners. I was like, I don't even want a majority. I want a minority of your business because I know the value that I can bring with way less effort because we're partners. Person's like, yeah, I'm super hyped about it. Went through the process. At the end of the process, came back like a week later than he said he would. And he was like, hey, I talked to people. They advised me not to have a partner to do this solo. I'm like, that's very interesting because he's like, he's like, yeah, you know, sorry. I'm like, no, I mean, I'm sorry as well because like we're both losing by not doing this partnership. Mm -hmm. That's how I view it. Mm -hmm. Now. I agree. We've opened a company in that same vertical. Six months from now, there's, he has no chance. Yeah. Probably you know should have partnered. Huh? Probably should have partnered. And if we had partnered, it would have been bigger than if I did a loan or if he did a loan. Mm -hmm. But because the route was, I want the entire grape, we are, we're not going to be able to get to a watermelon. Yeah. You know, uh, and it's also because you have to be willing to get, to give up good for great. If the great is bigger than like the pie is overall, I'd rather have 10% of a massive pie than a hundred percent of like a baby pie. Not even close. Cause it's, it's like, just, it, it's here's, like here's the it's big like takeaway though. Make sure that who you're eating the pie with is someone that you want to share a meal with. Oh, exactly. Sure. And on the other hand, the bad sure. side, I brought partners. I moved them here from California. I built an entire warehouse for them. I, I set up an entire furnished apartment for them to move, and they screwed me for 330 grand. Dude, you, I- uh, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's also a partner situation. Dude, I- so, uh, I oh, oh, that, last man. thing, last thing. And it, it's funny because- Someone just checked in on that business with me and they're like, Hey, how's that business going? And I'm, I'm pretty honest, like with, with high level business people, I don't hide. You know what I mean? Like with people that like, don't get it. Um, I don't, I don't give them everything, but like with high level people, I'm pretty vulnerable because I expect if I'm vulnerable and honest back one, they appreciate that. And two, mm -hmm. they can probably give me some feedback that I can take. You know what I mean? Like actual honesty. They feedback. know that your guard is down too. Exactly. They're like, like holy fuck, you just told me that? Good. Like that's that's deep. Like most people don't even fucking want to talk about these things. Most because people they don't even want to mention losing money or exactly, something. Exactly, exactly. They want to look invincible. Mm. So he was like, how's this business? I was like, look, honestly, and I wrote like three paragraphs. I was like, here's what happened. Like pretty shitty situation, but whatever, I moved on. He's like, oh, well, guess what? I actually have the same equipment that these people had. 10 times of it. Way better, way faster, way stronger. And my business does a hundred million dollars a year already. Would you like to partner up? Opportunity. He goes, listen, when I was younger, I learned the hard way, same way you did. This guy's older than me, not much older, but like he does very well. He goes, I never am business partners with people. And this is a controversy I had with my wife. Cause I told her this and she was like, yeah, but like, I'll tell you in a second. So he was like, I, I learned never do business with people who have way less than I do because they are way tighter with how they operate mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they don't understand long-term thinking money and just abundance the way that I do playing the long-term game. Yeah, exactly. When I, he's like, I just don't do business with people with much less, less than me is one thing, mm -hmm. but much less, it just doesn't work out. And I, I told that to my wife. She's like, that's not really fair because like when you had nothing, you should have done business with yourself still because of who you were. And I was like, yeah, but it's like, you're also an oddity. Like, let's be real. Fair enough. But there's a lot of me out there. You know what I mean? There's a lot of kinds of me's and people. I like think that, but. M the most important thing about business partnerships 
is finding people that have a similar vision and values. That's where I felt like things really got disconnected, where one person wants to grow, the other person doesn't. Where, where one person really values the game, the sport of business, the other person just wants to do it for a nice watch or a nice car. I think... Or to be able to travel. Right. To make means. Yeah. I think values, same, and obviously same end objective and goal, but also complementary skill sets. You could, mm. I, I, there's a complimentary skill, skill sets and I also have, skill sets and I also have to like you as a person. I, this mm. one, this one That's is, good one this one about. is, this one people overlook because I'm going to spend more time with you than my freaking girlfriend. Right. And so That's I have to facts. like you. I have to like you. And I believe. No, I have to love you. Yeah. And dude, I actually, I don't believe in like work life balance. I just believe in harmony where everything kind of flows together where I'm working. It feels like play when I'm playing. It feels like work. Right. And in order mm. for me to make that, that come into fruition, I have to actually like the person I'm working with. And so you could have complementary skill sets. You can have the same mission, same values. But if you and I fundamentally just don't get along together, this is not going to work. Yeah. Like on a friend, on a friendly level, you're saying on our yeah. outside of work. Relationship. Yeah. I, I don't know if I don't, I more often than not being friends first and then partnering up on something can be tricky. Like it, it worked out with us, which that's, which is more of an odd. You can meet someone but, and click and, and it can, it can totally work. You both had something already. That's what it is, yeah. You get what no, I'm I, I, so our, like our, our, our relationship was founded on business first. Mm -hmm. our, our friendship. I get it, but you also had your individual entities, yeah, as well, yeah. which is which is a part of the friendship thing that makes it work. <clears throat> yeah. Bro, I'll, I'll, when I first started, I went through six friends and I gave them all the opportunity to be my business partners. Wow, they definitely yeah. all regret he, it. Now. Here's what well, my friends still tell me: like, fuck, I regret like fucking up and so not doing it. Here's a really good story from when we became business partners. So. Really lo uh, looping back to the whole getting yelled at outside of the house for talking late at night. So fast forward, and we're at this event together, an event that I'm hosting for Seven Figure Agency. And that night at the mastermind, I'm like, Sergio, you're going to be my business partner. I just knew it. As soon as I met Sergio, I was like, you're going to be my business partner. I literally shook his hand. I said, welcome to the team. Excited to have you. Now we didn't. This is how Joel does all his deals. I love like it. The one we just did a deal. <laughs> we shook exactly hand. like that. We shook as long as we you have, shake. You shake yo, twice. We didn't have terms. You shake. Look, there was no terms you whatsoever. Do the, and then you like, do the tie down deal, close. Right? You sure? Yeah. <laughs> you do it twice. Yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know. If, I don't know if, if Joel even remembers, but we were actually gonna even in Atlas Digital. We were there's a small moment we we're gonna partner, and then we even, we've, we partnered before Agency Lab on this thing called like Influencer Co or something for like a short while. It was like a flip. That, that was not a real business. That was not a real. That was like a no. So so we had done things together like like i had done things with Dude, one time my sales guy omir was out i was too busy to run the business the day-to-day -day. and then marcos the ex-business partner was also out so omir was my sales guy i think he's been on this podcast and uh everyone was out so i was like sergio please can you take these sales calls with these chiropractors and just step in this guy closed like all of them, like a hundred percent. Like for a week, I was like, "Yo, can you keep closing?" He's like, "No, I just did the favor." Yeah, yeah. I was like, "Dude, I'm doing your favor, bro. Like, pay me my commission." Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> he just came in, bro. He, this guy's selling roofers. Then he comes in and then he sells chiropractors. Goes like three for three or something. Like, or he closed like three or four people, and then he's like back to business. But long story short, we met in person. I said, Sergio, we're going to be business partners. I don't know what the structure is. I don't know what the plan is. I don't know what the equity is. Let's just do it. Now, here's an interesting thing. Because we were so action focused, and this is probably a mistake, and I wouldn't recommend it. And now that like, for example, we just partnered up with someone in another business and we did it the right way. But what's really interesting is we actually didn't sign any operational agreement, any contract. We didn't restructure the, uh, the equity nothing sergio didn't even have access to the bank accounts for the business when we offered him the business partnership and for a whole year it went on like this so for a whole year we actually tested the partnership before ever signing anything so by the time we came to sign i remember being like sergio you need to freaking sign this because honestly i completely forgot let me tell you what happened <laughs> So, so you gotta understand, like at the time I had, I had just had the agency and I was, I fully removed myself from the agency. I was doing like a few million, few million a year. So I had nothing to do. And I felt like, honestly, I felt like an asshole. Like, what am I doing in my life? Like I'm, I'm doing nothing. Right. 
And so Agency Lab had just started and I was like, all right, well, I know I could blow this up. And I, I also know the market. Well, I'm part of the market. Joel's part of the market. That's part of why it succeeded. And so I just took all the execution mind that I had in, in the agency and I said, all right, I'm going to bring it to Agency Lab. We actually wound up blowing up. I was too busy to think about equity. We didn't have time. Like, so yeah, we built out our whole sales team, like all the SOPs for sales. Like, it was just like, let's just blow up. We could figure it out later. Now, again, I don't, re don't recommend that. But it was also like we were friends first. We'd done deals on things together in the past. It was well, what's, you know. what's really interesting though, which kind of brings my this this point full circle around partnerships. We tested it before we signed anything, mm. and I think that's really important. Now we didn't consciously do it. It's not like we were like, okay, let's wait a year. But mm -hmm. I think it's really really valuable, especially if you don't really know the business partner that well, or at least you don't know them in the in a business partner relationship. I think it's really important to date before you marry. Mm. And a lot of people think they know the person, but the person and the entrepreneur are different. Very, 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 very different. So for example, like you might know me as a guy, as a friend, I'm like a sweetheart, I'm always do a favor for you, but as a business, I'm a little bit more savage. Like I'm gonna just get more to it. So you, if you judge me off the person, you might be, you might be misjudging who I actually am. Because the, the the business person, the business mm -hmm. person shows up a little bit differently, you know. So it's like when you when you meet someone in in just on the street and they're like super nice, and then you see them in the gym and they're just fucking going so hard, and you're like, yeah. whoa, I didn't know that guy had it in him. Just be ripping deadlifts Dude, I, like I, that. When know? I when I met you, I was like, I don't think he's the kind of guy to pull out a thing of watermelon <laughs> out of his backpack. <laughs> but then you right before we do the podcast, you pull out a whole. It's thing daily. Of it's daily, bro. <laughs> Andrew literally eats a quarter watermelon every, maybe a half watermelon every day. It's not that much because I cut up one and it lasts me a few days, but yeah. A few yeah. days. It lasts me like 40 days. 20, okay, yeah, 48 so hours. Quarter, he he ate quarter. three pounds of watermelon before this podcast, guys. True story. Talking about Andrews. Not even true. I want to hear you guys' take on Andrew Tate. Ooh. Andrew I want to hear, I want to hear Eddie's take on Eddie's Andrew. take. Eddie's he take. Got, he just got taken down on Instagram. Yeah, as of I didn't know that. as of today when we're recording this really podcast, sad. his Instagram and Facebook got taken down. I didn't know. Something I mean, I like that. I think he's a marketing genius. Yeah. I, I I mean, he's super smart. You know what's funny is like the other day I uh, was scrolling through YouTube and there was a thumbnail from three years ago where one of my like one of these YouTubers that I watched, he actually talked about Andrew Tate like three years ago. No way. Really? Yeah, he's been like He's been doing this grind for like a minute and it was just a matter of time before he like he was gonna pop did his little podcast tour and just like popped off super hard. And uh, you know, props to him. I mean, he's doing his thing. The thing is, is like if you don't like people, you just have to stop talking about them because Andrew, talk don't about bounce somebody, around the question. What are your oh, what's oh. your take? What's your take on Andrew Tate's I, I think that he I think that he has a lot of uh he's definitely got a lot of opinions that are he, he cuts straight to the point that I think a lot of people know in their heart is true, but it's worded in such a harsh way, the way that he, like, says it in such a, like, aggressive way that people are like, whoa, dude, like, you know, there's, some, there's, a level, there's a level of truth to this, and I probably at my core believe a lot of it, but I want to, like, resent it at first because you're, like, acting like a dick about I, it. And I, this, this I think you know what's fascinating? Don't say. I, I love Andrew Tate. I think he speaks what's on everyone's mind. And if you actually, I don't know if you guys have read Eugene Schwartz Breakthrough Advertising. I know you both love reading books. Um, I have. I literally read like 10 pages, but. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, and then he paid Eugene Schwartz. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. But he was in one, through the first what, pages. I, I, really like, phone hold on, I, I really like one of his quotes, and I'm going to butcher it. But he says the best form of advertising speaks to privately held feelings, desires, or pain points. And. That that you he, you feel inside, but you don't express verbally. And I think Andrew was able to tap into a lot of the feelings, beliefs, and desires and pain points that people privately have. Way more people that I know are one hundred percent top G with Andrew than people well, that, well, uh, that don't. Well, well I think uh, I fully agree. Um, and I also think it's be the. the I, it's, it's really interesting. If you look back to the past hundred years, uh, taxes ended up going really liberal, then very conservative, and then really liberal, and then very conservative. E like the actual tax rate of how much people get taxed on, 
it ebbs and flows. And I think over the past decade, we've seen a push towards more of the liberal agenda, more of the left side of things. And I think that also Andrew Tate is a, is a result of that far, far move to the left where now he's coming off very far. I don't know if it's a left thing as much as it's like, we've seen extremes are never right or wrong. Maybe not left or right. It's more like blue pill, red pill. It's It's, more like, it's more like we've played this very politically correct game. That's more accurate. We've played a very politically correct game for the past. I think feminism has been dominating the last 20 years. Good. And, and, and obviously there's nothing is good or bad, but then what happens is the extremes on both ends wind up being the problem. When the reality is probably somewhere in the middle. And I, I think most people, if you just listen to what Andrew Tate's saying, would probably agree with like 90% of what he's saying. The difference is he has to say it in an extreme way, otherwise it won't grab attention. But if you just listen, a lot of his philosophies, ideas, and beliefs are things that like you would probably, as a male or female, fundamentally agree with for most things. I'm sure there's some things that are kind of outlandish. But you would fundamentally agree with it. The difference is he has to say it in a polarizing way. Otherwise, in this market, you just won't grab attention. Like scroll on TikTok and you're competing against famous booty. people, <laughs> booty shaking, booty shaking <laughs> and more controversy. So how yeah. are you going to get attention nowadays? That's actually a great, here's a good question for you guys. How do you grab attention in a way that is not outlandish? Um, I think, I think especially for ads, there's like two things that I think about in content right now. And it's like, you've got the direct response type ads that are like, I'm identifying a problem in the first like two seconds of this thing that you identify with. And that because you identify with the problem, you're, you're going to stop your scrolling because you're like, Whoa, yeah, that's me. You know what I mean? So that's one side. And then there's the other side that's like more experiential where you got to like do some kind of entertainment in a way that's going to like attract them in. So like, whether it's through like TikTok style entertainment where you're literally like dancing and it's like some fucking brand deal or something, or it's like uh, a very strategic, uh, you know, placement of some, of some kind of piece of thing in, in, a, in a comedy skit or whatever. And that's like one complete side. And then there's the other side of like, just making like super high quality shit. That's like fun to look at. You know what I mean? Like, but see, dude, but every, the, the you problem look at is, shots and you're like, wow, that's like pleasing to see. But see, the problem is in a market in which everyone is doing that, the high yeah. quality content, the props, the funny shit, everyone's doing it. How do you grab someone's attention? I know how. Just show off your muzzles. You gotta just take off your shirt. <laughs> you gotta just take off your shirt. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's- If we get Sergio to take off his shirt, it'll stand out. But see, but see, right. but, but see what's gonna ha- here's what's gonna happen. You'll do that, I'll do the shirtless thing for like, you know, three months, whatever. It'll I can't pop. pull it off, but- I'll do the shirtless thing for three months, it'll pop. Other people will catch on that that works. It's kind of like, you know the TikTok uh, headlines everyone's using, like the yellow with the blah, 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 with like the bold? Dude, that, uh, I if I see you have, I shouldn't even look at it anymore. You know what I look at more so than the yellow that pops? If you don't have anything on it. Mm-hmm. It's like when the market zigs, you got to zag. And I'm so- tell our video editor. I don't look at it if it has like the, I'm like, dude, this guy's the same as everyone else. I'll keep, I'll keep going. It's like, the, what catches my attention is being different. It's funny, Andrew hates the fucking yellow text. Yeah. You see? <laughs> yeah, but I still, we still put text, but we just do it in a way better way that doesn't look like shit. Dude, it's just like everyone else is doing it. So everyone how do you else out? is like so corny. Yeah, I'm about to do some weird font. <laughs> yeah, like, he's gonna do curly, just like, cursive. <laughs> just cursive font, font on TikTok. So hard, His man. editor is just writing in cursive, and they're screen recording that as the captions. If just you a guy want, writing if you want to stand out on TikTok, stop using the same font as everyone else. And now I want, I'm gonna have my video editors handwrite the font <laughs> first on their iPad, Get the then import it into Final Cut Pro, and it's gonna. It's, it's gonna convert like it's crazy. Still not gonna I'm gonna have all my captions read with like Donald Trump's voice. That'll stand out, and it'll be my face. Donald Trump's voice is like that's. Gonna I get never to, read books. Never. never, re- never Donald Trump one. never read books. <laughs> I never read books. I like, see that. You see we that. Never we said we never read books. That's not what we said. I'd rather yes, execute. You did. I'd we kind of did. Yeah. 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 Sergio's last book was like four years. No, it was when he was twelve years old. It was like Clifford the Big Red. He told his mom, "I'm out. I'm done with books." Twelve years old. Yeah, but. So you guys, uh, you guys have helped a lot of people in the agency space, right? You've helped a lot of people make money online. Like, are you still doing that? What's the, what's the next steps here in your uh, duo career here? I think forever in life we will be doing that. It's just, it would be, and it's like, it's, I, I, I would hate if I said, hey, this is like a, it's a, it's not a money thing. No, no, no. It, it is a money thing, but it's also incredibly fulfilling. Notice how I said fulfilling, not happy, because I don't believe in happiness, but. 
I think. Jesus, why this guy's so. Dumb. Neither do, dude. I all right. I don't believe. Uh, why is that? Are gonna go here again? <laughs> I don't believe in happiness. I don't. That's a different conversation. If you guys, I actually have, watched your uh, TikTok video on. on I, that I, was here. one of the ten. Like you're like here's ten things people probably disagree with, but I believe. Bro, you have you being I, having you having you to be happy. It? You having to be happy is a myth. Yeah, that is a myth. Having to be happy is so a myth. People, you don't believe in so, happiness. So, so, no, of I don't, course I believe in happiness, the emotion. But I believe most people optimize their life around a feeling that is fleeing. Yeah, you could be extremely happy and then get a phone call that something really sad happened to a family member of yours, and the happiness is gone in an instant. So why would you optimize your life over something that you don't really control? Instead. You should optimize your life around things like your core values, around things like, okay, what makes me fulfilled? Not happy, fulfilled. For mm -hmm. example, I love the sport of business. I actually love the sport of business more than making money. Like, yeah, it's the, it's making the, money the, is important for sure. I'm not going to take away from that, but the sport of, I love playing the sport of business. I'm very stressed out most of the time. <laughs> I'm very, I'm anxious. I, my emotionally, I'm not happy most of the time playing the game and the sport of business. Just like an athlete, an athlete, a professional athlete isn't happy on the court. Like, ha ha ha, I'm happy. They're actually in a very aggressive state. They're in a very focused state. They're in a very tired state, stressed state. Yeah. So I think optimizing They're making sacrifices to yeah. do something that's greater than themselves I'll, I'll that they society, want to reach for. You want to hear who's the most happy people? People who are drug addicts and then get that hit of drug. Like that in that moment, they're the happiest people in the world. So is that what you want to chase? Yeah, it's like and, cheap dopamine. Yeah, dude. You know? Or 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 if, if you notice the things that give you the most fulfillment in life also kind of take away from your happiness a little bit. So for example, if I were to set a goal to climb Mount mm -hmm. Everest right now, it would be freaking hell. Right? I would have to train for six months, work my way up. But when I got to the very top, I, it's the most fulfilling feeling in the world. It's like the feeling of accomplish, accomplishment. Yeah. And I also think, f f if you think, if you f it's like expand the horizon of thinking a little bit, fulfillment, fulfillment, human fulfillment. Just hear me out. No, you're laughing. <laughs> no, you're, no, I'm laughing because you're in the tree. You're like, you, no. <laughs> you're like Homer Simpson in that meme where he like just yeah. goes into the bush. You know what I'm talking about? That's, <laughs> that's Sergio in the tree right now. By He's the end of it, just eyes. Let right? me just explain. Human fulfillment not happiness, human fulfillment evolves us more so than human happiness. I'm not saying we shouldn't be happy. There should be, you should have moments of happiness. You should taste it. But if you're chasing fulfillment, that means there's progress. That means there's stress. That means that you're constantly moving forward. People who have, ha like, you know what would be happy? Sitting down and watching Netflix all day for eight hours a day. That's happy. I'm like, that's a good feeling, right? But you're also unfulfilled. But once you hit a certain point, you don't feel the happiness. Yes. You know? So I think it's I, like you I, think you'd want to sip my ties all day on the beach, but it's like on day seven, you're like, bro, okay, I did that. I'm, I'm I, I did that. Yeah. I, it was like, I couldn't, yeah. I, I could no, not, I, I, I feel could, you. I Not two for me personally. Yeah. I couldn't like have, you know, I got, I got the I question. I got this question. Uh, I want to build something. Like, I don't know, six months ago or something. So I was like, oh, when, at what point do you think you'll stop? I'm like, don't you find it interesting that guys like Warren Buffett are still in the trenches? It's because it's about the process. It's about the thing. That's what they enjoy. Not the, there is no, end, business is a infinite game. There is no end result. It, they just love the thing. I show up today. I show up to work even if I don't have to show up. This is part of the reason why in the agency I had to remove, I, I, had, I had to leave because I became a problem. But I, I had to show up to work. It was like, what am I supposed to do in my life? Imagine, I, I took two weeks off where I just tried not to do shit. I took two weeks off where I tried not to do anything and I felt like the most unhappy and unfulfilled human being in the entire world. Yeah. It's like, I need to do something. We're made for, we're made for progression. We're made to constantly go, go. Also, you have to also ask yourself always, is this being, like, what is the marketing behind these big messages that society instills in us. Is happiness something that we should be striving for every day? If that is the message we're getting, why is that? Well, maybe they're trying to sell us something. You know, I, it, it, it just feels like, for example, we talked about college and high school. All of those things are set up in a certain way to, ascend, to to sell you on an ideology, on a belief system, to eventually get you to act or be a certain way. And I think that what happens is society sells you on happiness. It's impossible to accomplish because it's a feeling that you largely can't control, which then makes you unhappy, which then makes it way easier to sell you things because you're in a state of pain. Yep. 
Mm. I think also it's like if you have kind of a docile community that feels content with just, you know, whatever they're, they're optimizing for happiness rather than like fulfillment, then also that's the type of, you know, that's the type of population that you can just kind of do whatever you want. If you're, if you're kind of the one that's controlling that, but I don't know if I like believe that there's some kind of crazy overarching narrative. I think that's just like kind of the way that things work, you know, kind of like what you were saying before, you got to have moments of low to experience the highs and stuff. It's like, that's how nature is. That's like mm. the sun sets and then it comes back up, you know, batteries, like you charge them just to decharge them and then you charge them up again and then you decharge them, you know, like there's always a up and down of life and you can't just like optimize for like just straight dopamine every day. Cause you know, that it just, that, that shit doesn't last. Yeah. Dude, I, I met this guy when I was, uh, man, I don't know, maybe like 13 or something. Actually, maybe like a little bit younger. I don't, I don't know. But um, I was taking the train back home, uh, like leaving school or something. And it was this old guy. And I, like, I was always like a weird kid. I would just, I'd actually talk. I enjoyed, you said the age group thing. I enjoyed talking to more older people than I did my own age group. I feel like they were just, they had more. I was the same way. They just had interesting conversation. It was like. Way what, more interesting. The six year old wants to talk about Power Rangers. I'm Even like, now, bro, when I hang out at like group gatherings with like families and other people i like to sit with like the 50 year olds yeah yeah i I think i think i now but you know i don't go for the like i think when i was younger i went for like the extreme i wanted an 85 year old which is like maybe i don't know if i was too disconnected yeah a little bit too disconnected now like now i want to go for someone's like 50 to 60 maybe ish but at the time it was this guy who was maybe like 75 dude like 75 years old and you know you could just look at someone's like you could just see like like regret in their eyes you could just see it. You could just tell, like, this guy's got some pain, some shit going on. And he's sitting on the freaking train, and I just did my thing. I approach him. That's kind of, it was It was always like a, hey, man, like, how's your day going, blah, blah, blah. I was like a little kid. And he said, and, you know, we start talking for, like, 15 minutes or whatever. And he winds up telling me that that year, earlier in the year, his wife died. And I was, like, you know, trying to consult him, but I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And he goes, uh, he, he this one line he said, never left my mind. I, I still take it with me to this day. He said, the the pain of regret is worse than the pain of not doing it. And he said, I died or she died without, there's some things I wanted to tell her that I, that I just didn't tell her. And that regret, that regret is the biggest freaking pain of all. And so the way I see it, even if it makes me unhappy, but I, I have to just get it out. I'd rather do that because it, you know what, you know, what's hap- you know, what makes me feel, would make me feel happier if I didn't have that difficult conversation. Let's say me and Joel are going through something and I didn't have that difficult conversation. It would probably make me feel better, right? Mm. But then what if, because I didn't have that one difficult conversation, three years later, the entire business is fucked. Now we have, you know, 30, 40 team members that I have, I'm responsible for that is messed up. Their families get impacted. The clients get impacted. And because I didn't have that one difficult conversation because I was optimizing for happiness as opposed to optimizing for just doing the right thing and fulfillment. And so. Yeah, optimize over core values rather than happiness. At least that's, why I shared that on that TikTok video. Um, so, yeah. What were some of the other uh, things on there? Because there was a there was a couple that I was like, was, I I did a hmm. video. It went viral. It got like three point four million views on TikTok. It was seven uncomfortable truths. Um, three point four mil. Three point four mil. Nice, bro. It popped. Yeah, three point four million. It, I thought I was gonna get a lot of hate, but what's fascinating is I got a lot of support. People were like wow, thank you for sharing what's been on my mind, kind of what we were talking about earlier. It has like 400,000 likes and um, seven uncomfortable truths. Let me see if I can remember them. Number one, the government can't save you. So whether or not you succeed in this life is not independent independent on whether Joe Biden is president or Donald Trump is president. That was number one. Number two, this one I got some hate for was uh, most, uh, how do I say it? Most uh, B and C students end up going out and making millions while most A students end up working for the B and C students. Something along those lines. The idea is, of course there's, and people were like, oh, what about, most college dropouts like Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates dropped out of these Ivy League schools. But the reality is most entrepreneurs, even if it's just an, a CEO of a roofing company or 
CEO of a solar company. It doesn't have to be Microsoft. Most of those people weren't necessarily the smartest academically. They just took they just took much more action. Whereas a lot of the people that were A students did end up getting jobs and just following the philosophy of go to a good school, get good grades, get a good job. The system. Yeah. So that's that was number two. Number three was happiness is overrated in terms of how you should optimize your life. We already talked about that. Number four was for most people, if you have to go into debt, college is most likely a scam. If you're studying something where a college degree is irrelevant and you have to go into debt, college is more than likely a scam. Unless you're trying to be a lawyer, doctor, therapist, academic, college probably doesn't make sense for you. That was number four. Number five, I said money isn't real. I think we could all agree money as we know it doesn't actually exist. Every time that you put $100,000 in the bank account, they own the money now and they essentially have an IOU on your money. It's their money now and they lend it out over 10 times. And it's, they, they, they essentially are promising you that they will pay it back, but it's now theirs technically. And it's only insured up to $250,000 per bank account if they go bankrupt. So it's fascinating how we think we have all this money, but it's literally just a number on a screen. And when I send money to someone, it's literally, they're just going beep and they just look minus that and they add it to that. I just returned to my home country, Lebanon. And uh, my entire life, 1500 Lebanese was one US dollar. Okay. So like if I went out and I bought, you know, if I spent 200 USD, it would be 300 grand Lebanese. Okay. Mm. 1500. Very easy math. Whole life. It's always been the same number. 1501, 1502, 1499, whatever it is. It's 1500. The last three years has been massive corruption in the country, all this shit. They basically did a bunch of shit, which forced a giant fake inflation that this government system created in order to, you know, pay back this debt that they stole. Long story short. Anyways, for the first time ever, I went to Lebanon and it is 33000 wow. per dollar right now. So it's um, 22x what it was when I last went three years ago. And bro, it gives you a fucking perspective because someone said it, not because, not because of anything technical that you could see, track, predict anything because someone said it because someone pressed a certain button, everyone's money. Like the dude, dude just imagine for a second, you have a million dollars. You've spent your whole life saving a million dollars and your million dollars right now is worth like fucking 30 grand. Because they decided to print the fuck out of it. And just say not even print it. No, they didn't print it like you. Yeah, it's not printed. There wasn't even like, like, oh my God, they're printing a lot of money. Oh, inflation. It's like out of nowhere, one day, 1500 bucks became $14,000. And it was like, whoa, that's a 10x difference. That's kind of weird. And then it just keeps going. Kept- and now, now in that economy, there's like a bunch of me's there. American people with US dollars just pumping money into it right now. As soon as they leave, when summer's over, that 33 is going to become 50 because there's nothing holding that line. Wow. And it gives you a perspective, bro, of like yes. all this. It, so many, dude, I just looked at people and I know that for the last 30 years, they've just been chasing the bag and the bag just fucking vanished. In front so of it, it's not that wow. money isn't real. It's just money as we know it, as society knows it isn't real. You can buy money. That's what getting a loan is. You're essentially saying, hey, give me this money and I'm going to pay you interest on it. You can literally buy money money the idea of money is real so so yes of course but but not as most people know it Mm -hmm. um here's here's an interesting one that i think we should talk about um one of the other uncomfortable truths was following your passion in life and trying to make money trying to make a career out of your passion is overrated i'm passionate about basketball but you guys all know I'll never play in the NBA. So following <laughs> hell no, fo- following <laughs> hell <laughs> no. Hold on, hold on. Um, I also, I also, um, a lot of people don't know this about me, and we can get into it later if if you guys want. But w- before the before COVID, I used to do a lot of improv comedy, and now I'm getting back into it, and I love it. I do it once a week. I perform. It's really really fun. Really, once a week. 
Yeah, once a week That's now. Sick. But before I used to do it like three or a lot. I used to do it a lot. Wow. Um, it's, not sta- com- it's not stand up. Stand yeah, up is with planned. a mic. Improv is completely improvised. You go up on stage, you Whoa. get a suggestion, and then you completely make up a scene. And you're on stage with multiple people or you're by yourself? Multiple people. Yeah. You're by like yourself. Ca- by yourself. Kind of like I, people skit. are always Whose like, is it anyway? Paul, people are always like, yo, Joel, can you do a quick improv set for us? I'm like, that's like asking someone to play football by themselves. Yeah. yeah. It yeah, like, where are you going to throw the ball to? Yeah. <laughs> to yourself? Yeah, um, it doesn't make sense. But the point is, if I follow that as my career because I'm passionate about it, that feels that feels completely dumb. That feels like a terrible idea. Well, and I think most people are sold on this idea that they should follow, they should always follow their passion in life. But I believe people would be far better off if they fo- t- took care of their finances. Damn, you ruined my my uh, my moment. <laughs> just say it again. People, people would. And I'm is that kidding. the alarm to just undo the last button? There's only <laughs> one left. That that shirt is hanging by. Yeah, it's time. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Dude, Take it off. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I think. Uh, I think people would be far better off if they focused on money first, took care of their finances, took care of their bills, took care of their monthly nut, and then went and focused on the things that they were passionate about. If you were born to a wealthy family and you could just do music all day, then fine. But I believe people would be far less stressed out. They'd be in far less amounts of pain if they took care of their finances and then did the music afterwards or yeah. focused on the things that they really, really loved after work. I know a lot of people who had a passion for something. They try to make it make money. Yes. And then they, they lose the it. passion for that thing. Mm. And now they lost their freaking yeah. like their fun thing. That That's yeah. how I feel about like music festivals. People are always like, oh, why don't you do like videography, photography for music festivals and stuff? I'm like, dude, I don't want to eat where I shit, bro. Like I, I really enjoy this thing because I get to go and be a participant as a yes. as just an attendee. I don't want to like make this my life. You know what I mean? Like I love going to them, but like I don't want to make it my source of like why I exist, you know? Making money is or let me say it a different way. Building a business and figuring out how to make money is not fun. It's it's not it's not it's <laughs> you not, can't have an emotion to it. And if it's a passion of yours, like, you're like, always gonna bring your emotional decisions to it. So like, like it's not what I was. was it shouldn't be something that you absolutely hate, sexy. But, but you don't have to make it like your one main passion that you like love this thing, and that's the one thing I do. I get yeah. I I, I mean I I agree with it. You know. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna be honest. I thought the fact that that's actually like that one that blew up because I don't think that's actually that controversial. I got a lot of hate on that one. Really, people. Hmm. That's not, that's. I would think like 99 percent of people would agree. Yeah, and I, I think no, I, a lot of people were like against it you know you, huh? we know who those people are those are people who are chasing their hobby chasing their hobby and yeah. not making any yeah. money and stuck running in circles around because of it yeah you gotta you gotta find ways to separate things yeah so drew what's one thing that most people would disagree with that you just fundamentally agree with mm, i i mean right now my brain immediately goes to like cryptocurrency i mean and it's even like based on what you were just talking about it's like there's so many people that still don't believe that like some kind of like they, they don't like they don't believe that it's going to actually be the thing and i definitely believe it's going to be crypto the thing. in one way or form like, <laughs> Bro, I we lost like a lot of freaking money <laughs> yeah. joe calls me one day in the micro joe calls me one day he's like hey man oh, in guard wait wait hold on this is i'm, I'm gonna do my, my joel impersonation no, i don't think it's in guard i'm gonna do oh, my, yeah, my yeah. joel impersonation joel says hey man i'm i'm really sorry to tell you this you know i just looked at our uh, crypto accounts and Man, I'm so sorry. We just lost like $800,000 each or something. And I was just like, oh, okay. That was my reaction, wasn't it? I was like, oh, okay. Like, I think I knew it was fake because everyone made so much freaking money with crypto. Like, I didn't, I think, I think here's the truth. If I would have had it in my But you're saying made as if it like passed already. No, nah, man, we invested in some crypto stuff. It like, it, it, it blew up. Um, I don't know what it made. Like, maybe it was up to like three or four million or something. And then we were each down like I don't know, four hundred k or five hundred k or something. I don't know the exact number, but no, then we were down more. Yeah, then we were down more. <laughs> yeah, he knows. Trust then, me. Then we were down. Sergio, Sergio, you you 
trust that everything is in the universe is going to work itself out. But I look at her numbers, you know, uh, that, I'm that's, like, that's, that's, like that's, the crypto's that's, coming that, down. I'm not going to just trust what, that what everything's look, fine. Look, I'm like, I just lost a million dollars. I actually, I, 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 but see, but that's actually I'm going to log in and check it. That's part of care, that's, bitch. that's part of why we work so well together because I think I think he leans a little bit more on the pessimistic side. Like, damn, things are going to fuck. I'm more like, nah, they're going to be fine at the end. And so it kind of works. We balance each other because I could be overly optimistic. I'm like, no, if it's if it hasn't worked out, it's not the end yet, right? And he's more like, well, we're all fucked. So it kind of balances our our energies wind up balancing a little bit. But I think the crypto hit didn't actually affect me all that much because I didn't see it as real money. It was just like a number on a screen. I think if I would have had it tangibly, like here it is, I think I would have felt a, a, like can a I, yeah. Yeah. Can, can I ask you something, Sergio? Something that, and, and I guess it's more of a statement about you, and then I'd love to get your opinion on it. There's a lot of people that have a lot of money and they have passive income, yet they still feel like they are financially slaves to their own reality. Whereas the people that truly know that they can go out and make more money, no matter what happens, even if they lost it all, I believe those people are ultimately financially free. What do you think about that? Because I feel like that's you're more of the I, latter. I I never feel like I can't make money. I oh, I feel like I I feel like if you took everything away from me, everything I had nothing. I had no no name, no brand, no business. All my resources are gone. Everything is all my connections are gone. And you gave me sixty days. I could build a business to like at least at least a multi six figure level like run rate. Cause it's like the you know, give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day. Teach a man to Bro, fish. Bro, I, I think thing. what it is is it's, 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 it's like a, it's similar. A, it's a know? few things. I have I rudimentally, it's de deeply embedded in me. I just believe in myself, not like an ego thing. Like, yeah, like, it's more like I just know when because I believe humans when they have their backs pushed against the wall, they just have an innate ability to figure things out. And I've had my back pushed against the wall so many times where like, and I've always come out on top. Mm. And I think I I've seen what the dark side feels like. I've tasted hell, and it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I like that. So I no longer fear it. Yeah, it's like, mm. oh, this was it. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I, Tim Ferriss in his so book, so wait till book. so so which I didn't read because once you taste because here's the thing <laughs> once you taste once you taste hell, it's not Bro. as bad as it's not as bad as you think. You no longer fear the devil. It's like, oh, that's what it was. And so because I've I've been there, done that, I know I can climb my way out of it and you know figure it out. I also think fundamentally, I've, you if you develop the right skills. If you develop the right skills, characteristic traits, and belief systems, anything is freaking possible, legitimately. Yeah. Alec, I know Alex Ramosi talks about, uh, I, I've heard him talk about, like, skill stacking. Like, like whatever you're going to do next, like, try to stack a skill on top of that that's going to be complementary to the one that you already have. That's going to make you, like, even more valuable to not only yourself, but to, like, any company that you'd want to join or anything like that. Just as a person, like, okay, I'm really good at this thing. What's the other skill? That makes me a fucking unicorn that I can stack on top of this. That's gonna just make me fucking bulletproof because I already know this really well. What can I add on to that to make me even more valuable? And sometimes the things that you think you need to learn, you actually realize that you can get to skip over them to like learn a, a higher level thing that you're like, oh, I actually I thought I was gonna need to know this, but I can just like partner with somebody or I can you know someone else can take care of that easily. I don't really need to like know that part. Uh, but I need to definitely know like this bigger part or something, you know? Yeah, dude I also just like I think when you've done something enough times over You build more like comp confidence comes from just like constant repetition. I've been there and done that you know, um, me and uh, another friend we scaled a, uh, a Personal injury agency that one hit like 60 or 70k in like a 45 day window when I did that I was like alright, and I wasn't even trying like I was not even trying I, I was not even trying. It was, I did like one call with like the team. That's it. And that just gave you the but, peace of mind that if everything went sour, you're I, like, I think I, I already, always. No, do I think I, like I think this. at that moment I had already had it. Mm. I think at that moment I definitely already had it because I just trusted my ability to figure things out. Um, because success is success is not about what you've built; it's about who you are. And I know it sounds freaking cheesy and blah 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 blah, but this is why you could take everything away and it's like, okay, cool. Give me give me a little bit of time, and I'll be able to figure it out. No problem. Because I've been there. But like I said, if you taste, if you, I, I tasted hell, bro. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, on our last podcast, we had a guy, Jake the Stock Guy. He was saying like, uh, we we were talking about how small is too too small of a, a stock account to get started, right? And he was like, probably like anything less than like two grand is like probably not enough to really like do anything with. And it's like, okay, I know how to get two grand because all I got to do is just like do 
you know, anything. I could work at McDonald's and get two grand. I could save up two grand in a couple of months or whatever. But it's like then once I get to that level, it's like now I know that, it, okay, now I've hit this point. Now I can go do something completely else. Like, you know, if you took everything away, it's like I know how to, I know how to make like 20 bucks if I need, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's that's like, an empowering feeling. I think everyone should fundamentally go and dance with their fears. Mm. Go and play with it. Go and play with it. I think everyone everyone will develop that that mental callus of like, I could figure it out if they just confronted their fears. You know, one of my biggest fears in life was public speaking. One of the reasons why I got into improv comedy as a hobby was because I wanted to feel what it was like to go on stage and have no idea what was going to happen. And I remember the first few times I was just like, my heart was beating so fast. Did you take classes before or anything? No, I, I started with a class. I didn't start performing. No yeah, way. Yeah. Um, and what's crazy is that now I go up and I'm totally relaxed. I actually feel more relaxed if I'm not as prepared than if I'm overly prepared because I know that if I'm overly prepared, there's a, an opportunity for me to mess it up. Whereas if there's a blank slate, all there is is an opportunity to create. So... It's fascinating. The first time I ever did public speaking, I was actually interviewing for my first job. I was applying for this program called Venture for America, which was run by Andrew Yang, who ran for president. And they had me get, it was really intense. They held the interview at this huge law firm in New York, the skyscraper building in New York at the very top. And I was competing against Harvard graduates, Yale graduates, UPenn graduates. And I remember at that interview, they had us get up and do a speech. That was part of the interview. And I just froze. That was the first time I had really done you public froze? speaking. I froze. I didn't say a word. And I said to them, I, there was a whole panel of judges, all these huge VC guys, like worth hundreds of millions of dollars. They brought in some really, really powerful people. And as soon as I got up, I froze, I panicked and I didn't say a word. Then I sat down, this was in the interview. Then I sat down and I said, I'm really sorry, I messed that up. I froze up and I just apologized and moved on. I ended up getting into the program. I think they really appreciated the vulnerability and the willingness to lean into the fear and very interesting. Um, lean into the fear and also like own it. I said, "Hey, I really I messed up. I'm really sorry. Um, next time I do this, I'm going to be more prepared and, and execute something like that." Fast forward to the marketing and sales job where I was going around to all these different high schools all across the United States. Part of the job was public speaking. So I had to actually get up in front of audiences over of 200 to 300 people of all these students and teachers, which in public high school is like, it's like the worst audience. Like no one wants to listen <laughs> no to you. No one gives a fuck. So it's like, yeah. it's like not only am I public speaking in front of all these people, I'm also trying to impress the principal to get them as a client in front of this huge uh, group, group of students. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't care. And it was my first jo job. So there was a lot of pressure. First time I had to do that job, had a panic attack. So complete, <laughs> complete panic attack. It was, I actually felt like I was going to die. I don't know if you guys have had a panic attack, but you, you actually feel like. Yeah, yeah. This is it. This is it. You start to feel depersonalized and you're like, take me to the hospital. You, 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 it's an out of body experience. And where, 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 what state were you in? For the first one yeah. in Colorado. And it was okay. actually a tiny like school. Wow. It was like 15 to 20 people. Uh, it was in Boulder. And um, what's... Uh, we can just pause for a second. Just just come yeah. through. Yeah. Interrupt your flow. No, you're good. Um, panic attack on uh, in front of everyone. And I hit it, right? It was just internal. I kept going. It was definitely not a good presentation. It was definitely not good public speaking by any means. But you know what's really interesting? At that point is when most people say, oh, I can't do this. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. This is not for me. And I remember telling myself, even if all I do is show up, even if it's awful, even if it's miserable, I've already tasted hell like you said. I already know that mm. even if I have a panic attack and feel like I'm going to die, I'll be fine. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be the 
I'm not going to change anyone's life. So you're like, with this my, is like worst case scenario. And I did it and it wasn't that, that bad. Yeah. Like I, I didn't still actually survived. die. Yeah. <laughs> and I told myself, if I just continue to show up, if I just continue to lean in, if I just continue to get comfortable with being uncomfortable, then I'll eventually get comfortable. Mm. And now I love public speaking to the point where I will literally, out of my own desire, go in front of strangers, go up on stage with zero preparation for fun. <laughs> I love that. But That's you know awesome. what? I faced my fear. That th Those first two years I did over maybe 100 talks. So I kept showing up. I kept leaning into the discomfort. You were like you you were you were afraid to ride the roller coaster in the beginning, and then at the end you and fucking enjoy the ride. Now I own I ride. own Six Flags. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you enjoyed the joke. It seems like Sergio and Eddie didn't like it. <laughs> it's a good joke. It's funny. Dude, you're so right though. It's like you you, you know I, I think about it with like turbulence on a plane, right? Like turbulence on a plane. I'm like I, a lot of people get like super scared, and I just I'm like. Dude, if I was on a roller coaster right now, I'd be having fun, you know? But it's just the context of the situation. It's like, you know, you're going up and down. It's like, dude, planes don't just fucking fall out of the sky because of turbulence. But people are freaking out. They feel like it's not supposed to be happening. People are starting to panic. Is it supposed to be doing that? Blah, blah, blah. Things are shaking. It's violent because because the expectation is that you just get on the plane. It takes you to the place and you're, you're good. But, like, you didn't expect this, like, you know, weirdness. So you just, people start to freak out. But it's like, if you just... Imagine you're on a roller coaster, close your eyes, and you just now, now you can I enjoy myself, that. Like, worst case scenario, I can walk off stage. I can decide not to show up. I can literally do whatever I want. I could also just stand on stage and say nothing. Do I really, th like, will it really matter in the long run? <laughs> no. In 20 years or fuck. Yeah, and that's it. Like, <laughs> even in that moment, like, people don't give a fuck. Like, bro, most people, people are not. Laugh. They don't care. There is this. They'll um, actually be more engaged. If Dude. I, if I, one, one of the secrets of public speaking, if you want to grab attention is to shut the fuck up. Now everyone's paying attention. It's, a, it's one, of, it's, it's fascinating. So messing up is actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. so. I love that. As opposed to the agency founder speech that you guys gave in the most, you guys rushed through so bad, I, not in a bad way. You guys killed your presentation. Actually, it was saying, one of my favorite ones. It was, yeah. um, it was amazing because you guys were just fucking pounding with information. You know, you know it what, was really I'll, good. You know what happened? But right, it was just funny because right, it was like the. <laughs> right before hopping on stage, I forgot, uh, someone from your crew was like, yeah, man, the crowd is like, they just, they, I, don't know if, I don't know if they feel the values there. I was like, all right, Joel, we got to flood them with value like so then we just we actually changed our cadence right before getting on stage we were like let's just give them everything like as much yeah, as possible yeah it was conscious to, like normally we're uh we we use a different public speaking techniques to grab attention like one of them is being silent uh one of them one of them is you actually walk to where people are quiet and disengaged so one of the biggest hacks of public speaking let's say there's an audience tony robbins does this extremely well if you see a side of the room that is a little bit more quiet or not really engaged or maybe on their phone, you just walk over and you just keep doing your speech right next to them. And then everyone's like, oh, he's right there. I got to be on my best behavior. You immediately capture attention. Um, so we do all these things. I do that a lot. I walk through the crowd. Yeah. Like, I also I walk through it. I also You're very good at public speaking. I don't know if you if it just came naturally and you just it's Eddie. grabbed it the definitely, mic. It's yeah. Eddie. It definitely came natural. Thank you. Appreciate definitely it. Came natural. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, also, I, I had to fuck up a lot. You know? I also, per I will purposely walk to the person that I feel is less in, less interested or less engaged and give them a look because then they feel special. It's like, or if I know their name, I'll call out their name. Then they'll feel like, oh man, I'm getting a little bit of attention. A hundred people here heard me talk or heard my name, you know? Small things like that. Um, I never had a fear with like um, public speaking or anything, but. Sergio's like, I, I did a couple of lap pull downs and I was jacked and I, and Dude, I you know and what I, it is? I did one speech and I killed bro, it. So bro, growing up in New York, you see some wild, I think I th I'll tell you what it is. Growing up in New York, here's what I here's what I, I think I understood at a young age. So no one cares about you. Yeah. Bro, no one cares about you. People used to come on the trains and just do wild things. And when I was super, super young, I was like, man, I would be embarrassed to be him. Two minutes later after they leave the train, everyone just walks away and it's like, oh, whatever, that guy was there. You you can literally just walk off, pull your freaking pants down. Take your dick out, and then like next thing you know, two minutes later, it's like maybe they took a picture, they laughed, they sent a text. Two minutes later, they're off to something else, right? It's like I think I, I caught that when I was young. I was like, ah, whatever. People don't people don't care about you as much as you think. That's that's very good to catch at a young age. 
Yeah. Because I cared a lot about what people thought up until like 20, 21, probably. Maybe even 22. Mm. Mm, nah, 20. I think 20 is where it's 19. 19 is where I actually stopped giving a fuck. I'm like really thinking about it. There was this, uh, this girl when I was in third grade. Her name was Ariel Rodriguez or Rosario or something. She was the last person I think I gave a fuck about like what what they what she thought, and I'm not saying like I don't care about your feelings like your your your, pers- like your you know your perspective. I just don't your perspective does not validate me. Um, but uh, I uh, I was doing a math like I was call up on stage. I was on the board. I was doing like a math equation or whatever, and she screamed out, "You're wrong." <laughs> <laughs> bro, and I looked at her like I'm not even, I looked at her, bro. That's funny. <laughs> I looked at her. Oh, Guys, I've been laughing. I looked at Ariel Rosario, whatever her last name was. I I said I'm not even finished yet. Like like it was like a long form equation. I'm not even yeah. done yet. And it, I don't know why I gave her the validation of a response. And I walked out the class. We were like in trailers at the time. Like we had like these trailers. We I walked out the, down the trailer. I was like, why did I care so much about? Like her perspective and on the way home when i was like walking to like back home from school i would see everyone like because you know new york has a lot of bums a lot of people do weird it's new york everyone's doing weird things that's when it hit me i was like ah people don't care about me and that's okay because the moment you understand people don't care about you as much as you think you can live your life a little freely you can make yeah. your decisions off of what you need to do mm-hmm. and what's the right thing genuinely speaking opposed to what someone else's beliefs of what you should do and should be it was like what you were saying earlier about you know act you know do with that thought experiment of if my if my parents were dead like what would i do right now you know it's the same kind of thing it's i mean it's obviously your parents are more important than just any random person but mm-hmm. it's the same even, kind of even, thing even more than your parents because that's yeah. still validating someone's that, that, thought that's just that example works so well because that is an opinion that we all value yeah. so much but, uh, yeah what if what i'll but you should only really value your opinion so what if you were 75 years old laying on your deathbed how would you look at the decisions that you're making today you personally yeah would you enjoy the decisions that you're currently making because your parents are one thing right you better be but are you personally satisfied fulfilled and happy to use your term with the decisions that you're currently making <laughs> to use my term that's your term bro <laughs> happiness is your term you've coined that term Who? are you would you be happy with the amount of watermelon that you're consuming <laughs> on a daily basis <laughs> or are you gonna have major regret for the rest of your life hey i'm i'm <laughs> feeling great about that i don't think i'm regretting my watermelon consumption rate it's pretty extreme <laughs> it's just no, water. you know what's funny? So, uh, do you know do you know who Lee Syed is? He used to be Gary Vee's trainer, and that's how he got kind of like big. Maybe Bradley Jordan, like the bald guy, yeah. Jordan Syed. Jordan Syed. Sorry, sorry, Jordan Syed. He, and he, I used uh, to DM him. I yeah, was he's like, the man. I used he's, to DM he's fucking him cool. Way back when. Yeah, he he's the man. But uh, he he had this one thing, and he was talking about when you're trying to be on like a calorie restriction. Like he's like, dude, just fucking eat watermelon. There's like barely any calories. It's mostly water. It fills you up. It's it's not bad it's for delicious. you. It's a fucking fruit. It's delicious. And, and, see and you have ever. you ever met anyone that's gotten fat from eating too much watermelon? I don't know. I don't ask them if you ate too much watermelon to get but the, fat. But, but <laughs> you know that that's not true. Cause it, like, I don't look at you, a fat guy. I'm like, did you eat watermelon? Like, but <laughs> think about how much watermelon you actually have to eat to get... Eat, like you know what I mean? Like yeah, it, yeah. like the actual. It, I, if watermelon meat. didn't have seeds, I would eat it every day. But I Dude, fucking have seeds. You can buy seedless ones. They have seeds. They have seeds. I do not have seeds in my melon. You don't have seeds in any of yours? No, dude. Yeah, I just bro. fucking pound that shit bro, down. No sense. seeds. It's like it's like. Bro, let me they, just pay yo, you weekly yo, plug, and just cut it out. Plug your watermelon company. You don't have one? Yeah, it's called it's called Watermelon. You should don't follow your I thought you don't follow your Post Malone is the influencer. It's a watermelon startup. We uh we sell watermelon without the rind, so you know how ripe it is. Because that's the hardest part about picking a watermelon. You know, you 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 can knock on it, you can look at the color, but you really don't know until you cut it open. You don't know. With watermelon, there's no rind. You know how they sell watermelon? It's just a red one. With watermelon, you could just dig in. In Lebanon, here's how they sell watermelon. It's pretty sick. There's on the side of the road. By the way, Lebanon, this is a uh, this is something cool that like my business partner saw Fredo, because he hasn't been in 19 years. He's like, this is fucking sick. And they just got back. The highway, like everything's on the highway. There's no like here, like you have to wait a mile to get on the exit. It's like everything's like the shops are there. This like you just stop. You just pull like, over. Like on the high on the strip of the highway. On the high, like the five lane road called the highway. Like the entire thing is just shops and restaurants. That's so you dope. just stop. Like, no, oh, I want, like, like every, there's a pa- there's like parking spots n- next to the highway. like you don't yeah, need to, you don't need to like exit the highway you don't need to exit ever <laughs> that's great <laughs> yeah you only exit to like go like up a mountain or something like besides that everything that's there. amazing so on the side of the road there's like fruit there's people like selling fruits in their carts like fucking like, hundreds, hey! of, hundreds of watermelons there's actual stores so you go up to the watermelon in uh, in Arabic it's called uh, like on the knife is what they call it and so you basically go up and it's like irresistible offer right let's talk marketing here 
basically what they do is they say, I'll cut the watermelon and show you it from the inside. Mm. And if you don't approve, you don't have to buy it. And so they pick their fucking best watermelon. Dude, we're they come up, they come up to the car window and they go, and they cut a square and they stab it and they pull it out. That's great. And you look at that shit. You're like, "Mm." Fuck, that's yeah. a good watermelon. They even give you a free bite. Because once you have one bite, everyone knows yeah. the rules. You can't. Watermelon.com. You can't send no. Watermelon.com. If you want to get your first one on the house. But seriously, that cool concept for watermelon. Yeah. Just overall, like, like about not knowing you got to tap it and shit. When someone just, like, picks they their just, best bit and, like, cuts it for you you're like damn you gotta have some confidence in your watermelons to be selling it like that but if they're if they've got a good supplier fuck it here here's where the psychology kicks in <laughs> Dude, when every, you everyone when ha- you- everyone hates you know i i believe that with atlas digital we really push the whole we'll get you a guaranteed result or your money back plus a thousand dollars everyone hates me for it but it fucking works it works it i works. would i would we I still would, use it in one why of do they products. hate you for that i think that people they couldn't compete with the offer. I mean, I, I, what's interesting is we only put offers out there that we could deliver on, and it really poked at people's inability to get results for their clients mm. because they couldn't compete with those offers. And then I think now people are like, it's almost like uh, you know how older generations are like, oh, the millennials. Like, or whatever, you know, they're always like, they're like, <laughs> shitting on the, people the want it generation. to be easier and comfortable the way that it used to be. And I they're think, like, come on, let me have a few clients I don't get results for. <laughs> yeah. Or like, or like, or like, or like, hey, let me just sell people without any good offer. And it's like, you can, but then you have to build a brand, which will take a lot of time and money invested. And you have to actually be good. You want people to work with you for who you are, not what you offer. Okay, then become someone that's worthy of being paid a lot of money just based on who you are, even if you don't guarantee results. Most people aren't willing to put that work in. We're, we're getting to that point as a company, I feel like. Yeah, of course. And I think- We pe- never guarantee results. It's ever. something that exactly, people- Exactly, but you earn the right. If you're, if, and I think like, if, if you're not selling people on who you are, you have to sell people on what you offer. And I mm-hmm. think because most people aren't play, w- willing to put in the time and effort to build their brand, and they're forced to play the game of offering a better product or better service. I think that's why they hate it. Offers it's hard. Are, it's hard. Offers like race. If you solely depend on on offers, like race at the bottom, because you can only offer so much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I get this question a lot, which is like, "Oh, would you rather be really good, really good at sales, or like have a really good offer?" Bro, I would rather have a really good offer with a shitty salesperson than a sh- great salesperson with a shitty offer. Not even close. But what really, no, not even that's close. a hot take. I'd, no, I'd also, I'd even, also, I'd also lo- I would rather have. But wait, 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 and and to out, like this, that might be a hot take, but this is not. So where where offer beats sales all day long, brand try trumps them both. Mm. The problem is brand takes so long to create, and it means that you delivered really, really good results for such an extended period of like time. There's not a guy like out selling frosted flakes like a salesman, bro. I, I uh, let me <laughs> let me ask you guys a question. People just I, fucking buy frosted flakes, dude. If I legitimately go <laughs> to like a CVS or whatever, and I need toothpaste, there might be a better brand than Colgate. I don't know. They actually might be better, might be cheaper. Who knows? I just go in there and buy Colgate, no question. I just leave. Right, because they built a brand. They built trust. a brand. The other person might have a better offer. It might be here's two for one, right? And they might actually have a better offer. It might be even better product. I'll never know because I'm just so indebted to this off to this brand. I just solely go so for it. So brand offer sales. It's brand <laughs> offer sales. I don't know why. Now, you now the- here's something interesting. With I see everyone copying offers when it takes just amount just it takes the same amount of energy to try to make a new offer. And instead of competing by trying to be better, you compete by being new and different. So for example, here's some free game for everyone watching this that's an agency owner. Everyone's offering Facebook ads, TikTok ads, YouTube ads for local businesses, right? You guys do e-com. How many e-com brands pay influencers for marketing? A lot. Yeah. No one has figured out how to do influencer marketing for local businesses. That right there is a new offer. Now you're not competing on the offer by being better. You're competing by being new and different. 
And, and you're kind of talking the product too, like the mm-hmm. actual product offering, not just like the deal or whatever. And, like and the, yeah, results yeah, yeah. guarantee. Like, yeah, I kind of pe- when I say offer, it's kind of all of the above. Like what are you? Like Products, what are you what's your, yeah, what are product you, plus offering. Offering. Yeah, offering. Yeah. That's a better way to put what it. What are you offering the marketplace? And the the, 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 exactly. the, the fundamental. Like most people just compete on. Oh, you're offering Facebook ads. I'll do it better by guaranteeing this result. And then this person's like, "Well, I'll do it better by guaranteeing this result." And what people don't realize with my agency and with our coaching program. We always try to figure out how to make things new. So for example, first we did make a guarantee. We said 50 leads guarantee in 30 days or your money back. But then I said, I'll get you patients that prepay and show up and I'll get you guaranteed. You're going to have a prepaying patient. Then I wasn't competing anymore on the money side of things on the result side of things. I was offering something that they all wanted, which was patients that will actually show up guaranteed. I'll, I'll tell you the easiest way to come up with a really, really good offer. Cause I did this three times in, in, in three separate agencies. So everyone always looks at the market and what the competition's offering. It's like, oh, they're offering 30 leads. I should offer 30 leads or maybe I'll offer 40, right? That's flawed because marketers are freaking wrong. Like we just assume we, we got it all figured out, right? Instead- It's I like this, the yellow caption thing. You're like, oh, he's doing the yellow caption. So that must mean that's exactly. why it's successful. So exactly. I'm gonna copy the yellow exactly. caption. You know what you should have done instead? Go to the people that you want to look at your stuff and ask them what would, it, what would intrigue you. So for example, the, um, we came up with an offer in the personal injury agency that was unheard of. And the way we came up with that offer is I told my sales team, call randomly call these 20 businesses, these attorneys, ask them, hey, what are you currently doing? What could be improved? What's a no brainer offer that you would say yes to right now? I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm just getting market feedback. What's a no brainer offer? And then we came back, we met up and, and we just discussed what's the closest thing to what the market said they wanted that we could actually fulfill on. And so the market is never wrong. Marketers tend to be wrong quite frequently. And so having the market dictate what the actual offer should be, you already know they're gonna buy. They told you they want it. And as opposed to like just modeling everyone else's offer. And this is part of the reason why the agency space gets so screwed, it gets a bad rep and it gets so screwed. It's like, it's like everyone's just modeling each other as opposed to truly b- 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 bringing that business yes. innovation mind to it. For example, um, in- Where's, and let, let me, Can I add on that real quick, yeah. just with one thing? You know why I actually guaranteed 50 leads? because I reached out to a few chiropractor clients that I had and I said to them, what do you hate about marketing agencies? And they said, oh, most of them can't back up their results. That's how I came up with it. But that doesn't mean that that is the only offer that you'll need to ever run. You can also offer other things. For example, chiropractors want auto accident patients because those are covered by insurance. That's something that they want that you don't even have to guarantee a result for because it's something that most people aren't offering. And I think most people hate the whole like money back thing, but they're looking at it too closely. They're not seeing the bigger picture. They hate it because they've forced themselves to play that game when that was never the game that I was playing to begin with. I mm-hmm. was just giving the market what they wanted and trying to create product market fit that I could deliver on. But because they just saw that and then just copy and pasted it. That was the first lever was, you pulled, but they could have pulled like another lever that might've yes. done even more shit. Exactly. I have, I have clients in agency lab that modeled the offer I had in the roofing side and blew up. And we just had to, and this is in the midst of me still running the agency. So I had to do one up them. And, but in the, when it, the thing with the offer is that it should be ever evolving because the market's over ever evolving. Right? So I'll give you an example. Um, we had the 40 lead guarantee thing for like a long time. And then this is in the midst of blowing up. And this is a big mistake people make. They, they wait until things stop working to try to figure it out. I want to catch the next wave before it even pop, like when there's no problem. Cause then, I, then I'm, I'm going into it with more abundance and less urgency. Like I gotta figure this thing out right now. And so in the middle of us blowing up, I think that we closed like 70 clients in a month. In a the, month? 70 in a month. Bro, what? In the agency, roofers, yeah. yeah. It, it, wow. Roofers are hot, super how'd hot. How'd you even get that many roofers? Roofers, well, roofers, you turn a lot more. You, yeah. No, no, I'm sure, but like how'd you even niche. fucking find 70 in that well, I'll actually tell you, you wanna hear the strategy? Dude, I around? closed you 27 want, chiropractors in a I'll, day. I'll tell you. A I'll, day? <laughs> Wait, yes, that was my record. Eddie, Eddie, I'll tell you one better. Holy those, shit. Check, check this yeah, out, check this out. It was at an event, but still. Those 70, oh, those, event, okay, those okay. 70 still, clients. Still, I don't care. 27 clients. Check this out, those 70, this is this is fire game for anyone who's listening. Those 70 clients cost me $0 to acquire. Nothing, because here's what I did. So in a high volume niche, niche, like when most people are, are wanting to get into, it, especially if you're gonna go the paid ads route, we spent that month like 30 or 40K on ad spend. 
And anyone else who wasn't a good fit, which in a high volume, you're going to get deal with a lot of people who are not a good fit. We just downsell them like 30 that month. We downsold 30 or 40 K worth of courses. Now in the process of downselling them, we still brought on a crap ton of clients who were a good fit. All those clients cost me zero because I've liquidated my ad spend. I spent 50, I make back 50. I bring on, even if it's just five clients, those five clients are, fr are free. Now I don't recommend this for people who are just getting started because you should have one product, one offer that you're, you know, one offer to bring the offer. To but if you're trying to scale your spend, it's, it's a it, double-edged it, it, sword, sort of right? Thing to liquidate. It was the only way for me to scale spend. Historically, I was spending like maybe 25 to like 35K a month. And I was like, I wanted to full send it. It was like the middle of the hot season for the roofing space. I was like, all right, well, how do I spend 40 or 50? How do I like full send this? And our sales team was like, oh, we're getting a whole, a whole bunch of unqual unqualified people. Unqual I was like, bro, we have a, sh I had a course uh, that, cause you know, part of my, back to the offering thing, I didn't just sell them Legion. I never wanted to be a Legion company. No one here should be a Legion company. You should be a business development firm. You're in the business of helping businesses grow. Mm -hmm. And whatever problem they have, just solve it. Um, but my sales team was like, oh, well, they're, they're, they're unqualified. What, what do we do? I was like, how much money do they have? Oh, on average, like 1,015 bucks or 1,500 bucks. I was like, bro, we have a ton of content. Go get, get, what, solve, find out what their problem is. And this was the genius thing around it. So find out what their problem is. Give them custom videos to watch. And then you could sell them anywhere from 500 to $1,500. I didn't care. As I gave them a quota. As long as you liquidate the ad spend for that week and ultimately the ad spend for the month, then I'm fine. You could sell it for 500 or 1500 I didn't care to make money on it. It was just to liquidate. Now, here's what's key. I also told them to immediately have a six to eight week check-in call with these people. Mm -hmm. The people that you just downsold. You solved their front problem. So let's say if I'm a roofer, my initial problem, the reason I can't even afford a $3,000 fee is um, I don't know how to generate leads. Right. Okay, cool. Solve that initial problem for a small fee. Six to eight weeks later, you check in on them. Now they've solved that problem through your course content, downsell, whatever. We they don't want to do it themselves. Yeah, but now, no, now every new problem that you've solved creates a new, bigger problem. So I was like, dude, now you have all these leads, but you're not closing them. Well, we have sales training provided by one of our clients who runs an eight figure company. Like, do you want to come on board? So now it's an easy ascension. And that little framework, that model can literally be duplicated across any industry. Like you could even do it in e -com. It's like, I know a lot of people who's trying to run ads in e -com, and I know it's difficult for like bigger, bigger brands, but if you get these fly by night drop shippers, for example, to liquidate your ad spend, to liquidate your ad spend. And then you land one big daddy client. That's a eight figure brand. That's our strategy. Today we have, I want to say like 25 leads. For the e-com space all through ads 22 are unqualified that's how it works yes see the, it's the not 20 just through ads though but it's see the, the 22 you know we're not plus, running we're not plus, running ad spend though but see when plus, you're just getting plus, started you look at the 22 and you're like damn what do i do with these 22 people and maybe at your level you probably don't have to do anything with them but if you're just getting started every dollar counts right so what do you do with those 22 people well you have you should create other products that do solve their problem at the level they're at and then built a relationship. The clients that we downsold a course or a coaching call, whatever it was, they wound up being the best clients for us because we got them from the ground up. So they were like indebted to us. They believed in the products that we sell because we helped them solve that initial problem. It's an easier, it's a more uh, uh, rudimentary problem to solve. Yeah, we, we, we definitely do that. Like, cause that's, that's one thing that Eddie's set up is, you know, it's like, we've got, we've got all these leads 22 of them are unqualified to work with like for media, but it's like, what, what else can we do? So we have, but two, wait, bro, the last three clients we've signed all do $24 million a year or more. Dude, nice. I, there's so many entrepreneurs that are like, Oh, how do I only get quality leads? It's like, okay, well then leave your niche because if you're in a niche where 90% of the people are broke, there's no magic button that you could press that's just going to only deliver. The you. only actual answer to that question is you have to reach out to your people. Yeah. You have to find fair. the people Outbound. you want to talk to Outbound. and you have to talk to them. The only way that's to do it. That's the only way to actually do it. The only way to do it would be building like an outbound sales team. Aside from, the, if you run any sort of paid ads, you're going to deal with unqualified prospects. It's just the nature of the. Of We're the, building a fucking sales force right now. Yeah. Just outbound. Boom, boom, boom. I went from one sales guy to seven. That's not, that's not a joke. He read it in a book. <laughs> yeah, he read it in the Amazon book. Bro, I, it's so funny because we had a record <laughs> sales just, month. Just kidding. And I went to my C, C, CFO and I was like, yo, this, um, just letting you know, I'm only on page 11 of this book. 
There's another hundred. Yeah, I can't brace yourself. I can't tell if Eddie's gonna hate me for my book. No, but but but, no, no, but no, no, I don't hate you. It's just a different perspective. I, I love that you're doing that outbound shit because number one, it you can't rely on paid ads for anything, right? Like when you build an outbound sales team, you're not gonna land the biggest clients from a Facebook ad. I mean, no, you can not. spark. You the, can, you can spark. You can. The, I had, like I had, I had tier eleven. <laughs> There's actually been a couple. <laughs> I had tier eleven. So I take it back. I take it back. Do you guys know tier eleven? Mm. Tier eleven, no. It's like a massive marketing agency for e-com brands. They opted into our ads and for like a hundred appointments. We, we, right? we told them the price of the program, and, and then because it's coaching program, they're like, "Oh, it's that monthly." So it's yeah. like people do come. You get some yeah. big, but the, big but players, but it, it's rare. You're right that they're kind of, you know, rare. But the, with uh, outbound, it's like oh, dude, what, out, right what, what I love more than anything else about outbound is that you've you've mitigated the risk of acquisition. If you figure out that metric. Like uh, exactly, exactly. You've make you because paid ads are always finicky. It's up and down. Whereas, like I fucking I would tell you guys our outbound system right now, but I know you fuckers would go tell every other agency owner because I'll sign an NDA. I, I, and I can't tell. I'll, I'll sign an NDA. I, 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 I'll say this. I'll tell no, you this. Eddie, I can't I'll sign afford. An NDA. Let me tell you this. I can't. No, no, I, the deal. I can't afford to tell anyone or even take that risk because it's such a good system. Guys, you all read the guys, book. Let me, <laughs> let me from our outbound emails, just emails. We are getting six appointments a day with eight figure companies. That's getting fire. on voluntary forty five minute calls with us. That's excited, fire. I, excited I, to jump on. That's, a 40. that's fire. Andrew knows what it is because we've been working on it. But like, and bro. I know some people are doing something kind yo, of similar. You, but I, it's yo, Eddie, you're a tease, bro. I like, don't. No, no, what? I like it. I like it. And you know what? What, it, what is it? What's is there a Hold pitch on. after the podcast? So, <laughs> so, so, so we had a mini outbound team in uh, in the roofing side, and here's kind of how we did it. Uh, and it was, I don't know if you're doing it very similarly, but we would. Uh, it wasn't emails. It was he never did emails, but it was mostly cold calls. We'd cold call. We'd say we introduce ourselves. Here's the thing: Ro- roofers answer cold calls. We're in yeah. ecom. Yeah, like these guys don't even have fucking phone numbers on their website. Yeah, yeah you don't even. We know have to play a way different game. We have to get way more tactical. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Not, like when I when I was first getting started, I don't give a fuck. I was like, I'm gonna sign up gyms, and I just called gyms and I signed up five that week just because I could Google them yeah. and fucking call them. The yeah. the the but you building on an Alban team, bro. Asset value is just insane because acquisition will never be a problem. It's just a matter of like, you, it, when you're always playing offense, you know. Yeah, but it's also like, it, it, you, so you've you've mitigated the risk of acquisition for sure, but you've also um, uh, you're gonna you're probably gonna churn a lot of the di- the dialers. At least that's what I experienced when I was building building it out. We churned a lot of people because to get someone really 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 good to outbound dial, they have the only way to work. Is if they see a potential future to be to work outside of like an outbound dialer, so like you get closer. Oh, I would tell them like in sixty to ninety days you're going to be a closer. This is your path. If you hit this quota, this quota, you'll be a closer. And if you hit this quota, this quota, then you get on paid ads. If you hit this quota, this quota, you get blah blah blah. That's kind of that's the only way it it worked. Otherwise, why would someone who's really really talented cold call in this day and age? You know. Yeah. Mm, that's it. That's the, that was the ending. That was the ending. That was, there was no hook to it. It was more like... <laughs> no, you said this is what we were doing. Remember you were getting into... Oh, you want to hear like the, the album process? Yeah, you started it. And so we, started. I would have one video. I would have one video that I just knew was super valuable that in, like showcased our expertise, showcased... Did you do a Loom video? No, 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 no. It was like a it was like a VSL with no pitch for the album, for the cold call team. It was a VSL, no pitch. Just, just straight value? Straight value. Straight value. We uh, our cold callers would call. They introduce themselves. They'd say, "Hey, we are blah blah. We work with roofers. Just so you know, we have nothing to sell you. We just want to. We're looking. You know, we help people in your area. We want to just hook you up with some free resources, just so I could point you in the right direction as to all the resources we have. What uh, is the biggest bottleneck you're facing with right now? Is it leads? Is it blah blah? Is it blah blah? We just bucket like three of the main problems. Whatever they told us, we'd send them the same freaking video, and they would. <laughs> And then they then they say it was the same video, but it saw, but the video legitimately solved all of their problem. But now they now they're more inclined to watch it because they feel like oh this is custom to me. And I don't know, it's funny, bro. <laughs> it's like automated it. You know, I was it's expecting funny, it's funny because it would have taken you thirty more minutes to make two more, more videos. videos. Yeah, that was expecting <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A, B, and C. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, dude. Then then so we, a personal trainer being like, "What are all the problems you're facing?" Cool, and sending you the exact same meal plan. Here's my like low anyone. carb diet. I no, think but but but, but it works. Yo, it works. But, <laughs> watermelons. Then, <laughs> then we just get all all we would do after. <laughs> <laughs> All we would do after is we would, we would gain com. permission to we would gain permission to follow up you know a day later two days later blah 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 on the this is how I created the entire ecosystem around it so 
the VSL they went to obviously was Pixel. So now they start seeing me everywhere. Now they're like, they're aware of the brand. This is how I actually got, like I, there was a period of time guys where I could legitimately pick up the phone and call almost any freaking roofer and they would know who I was because they saw me everywhere. Um, so we gained permission to follow Did up. Did you have a, a fun name? You're like Sergio the Roof Guy. I'm the guy with the fucking huge biceps. biceps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm the guy. With, oh, I've seen you. I'm I will the guy say with garden hoses I will say, in my bicep. I will, I will say when you have something quirky about you, it works. Like at that time, I had a full beard, like a full Dude, beard. You, you don't have to have a beard to grab attention. <laughs> you could just show but, up. You no, know, but you're right. You're right. This is actually <laughs> yeah. this is actually a big reason why I don't wear contacts. In videos and things like that, because my glasses have an identity to me. Dude, I mm-hmm. think you should dye your hair, like like black Ryan because it's fucking gray right now. <laughs> like Ryan Pineda, he said. No, but if you have something quirky about I'm you, like, saying, like 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 if you look at Alex Ramosi with green, hair Alex Ramosi obviously Alex Ramosi is jacked, which is one thing that grabs your attention. You're right, but he also had that stash. You guys forgot it. he had that stash. He had the for porn sure. stash. Yeah, he's got that, the lumberjack. It's yeah, bro, that's porn stash. And now it's the lumberjack look. It's it's and the nose, the nose strips, the nose strips, like. Yeah, uh, dude. Short I'm in freaking. Jeans, I'm in freaking Crocs right now. I used to take coaching calls, guys, with like eight and nine figure roofing companies, and I would say, and I was like, oh, look, look, I got my Crocs on. It's like they begin to know you as that guy. They just identify you with that with those. Funny story about Sir Jonah's calls. He has a mic, um, on his uh, on his countertop <laughs> yeah. like this. Yeah, sure, mic, and it's never actually plugged in. Never plugged in. He just and he, then he still grabs it. He though, still like, grabs it. It's yeah, all it's like, something, it's like something to play with. And he'll have <laughs> his fucking. He has his AirPods in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> There's some things that you don't. <laughs> I'm like, is this, Dude, this microphone commands attention, bro? That's, that's, it does. Yeah. You it know, does. it commands attention. Bro, I have watched this man literally it's a just legendary. Just you know what? You know, tie it to the counter, not even plug it in, and just not start a in. call. Sergio yep. is the kind of guy. Sergio is the kind of guy that is so, so funny. Sergio is the kind of guy that is so present into the human being that he's having a conversation with, call with, that he. Loses touch with reality, like the actual world, like physical all the time. objects, like all the time. It his phone could be dead, and he has like a portable charger thing, like this one, but it's not plugged in <laughs> all the time. I, I'm the worst. Because, at but this. but but you know what's crazy? You are so dialed in. That's why I'm the individual. You guys it's, like, it's like the whole world stops. If if Sergio's on a call, the whole world stops. You want to hear a funny story on the way here? <laughs> I already know what this is because he told it. <laughs> guys, guys, I like borderline had to freaking hitchhike to get here. Here's what happened. So that charger, my phone on the way here, my phone died. And I knew it was at one or two percent, like maybe one or two percent. But I was talking to a guy in the corner of Whole Foods. And I was just having a conversation. I was supposed to be like a one minute conversation. We're just talking for 20 minutes. He's telling me his whole life story. And I'm like there with this guy. like, whoa, whoa. And I, I knew my phone was, because you know, like it gets to 1% because iPhones can last at 1% for a long time. But it was starting to glitch. And I was like, oh, this kind of sucks. But I'm like here like, having this conversation with this guy. And I actually don't regret it, by the way, because I'd rather be that than the guy who like doesn't give a fuck about what people think and all this, like feel and all this bullshit. So um, my phone dies. And I'm like, fuck, I don't know where the hell I'm at. I'm at. To get a freaking lift in Alpharetta or whatever, it took 30 minutes, bro. So I, I approach a cop uh, or a guard or something. And I was like, dude, like, how do I get the back? The guard at Whole Foods. The guard at Whole Foods. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, how do I get? They have guards. I was like, I actually asked him, hey, can I use your phone? And he's like, no. He said, no. I was like, damn, this kind of sucks. So I got in someone. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm trapped. I'm trapped. Well, yo, what's the objection handle I mean, here? Here's the thing. I look at Sergio. I'm like, if this guy takes it and says he's not giving him back, I have no choice. <laughs> but I, I was also I'm sure that's what he's thinking. Yeah, right? he was just like, like dude, you know what's funny? I approach him and I don't know. He just followed. He, you could see him grab his gun. He's like, oh, shit, what is this? <laughs> no, he didn't do that. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah, he, 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 he didn't. Get out of here, bro. But you, could tell, but you could tell he like stiffened up a little bit. <laughs> he didn't tremble. No, because you know, cops, <laughs> cops, cops don't get approached. Right, cops do not get approached, but I'm approaching him and I'm like, I'm like, hey man, put my hands up so he knows I'm like, I'm not gonna shoot him or some shit. He's like, hey man, uh, my phone died. I have to get to this place by six. I actually had a, a call at six. Um, that's why I took the coaching call on the way here. And uh, he's like, man, you know, can I use you know use your phone? I'll give you a hundred dollars if you just, or you can order a lift for me to this location. I'll give you a hundred dollars. He says no. I'm like, damn, that's good ROI for you. It's like twenty bucks for me, bro. The heck, like, he says no. Whatever. I get in someone's random a random person's car. This happened. Like, I get in a random person. I talk to the person. I weasel my way in. I don't want to say, like, and I don't mean weasel like, I'll like, blah, blah. it was more like, hey, man, here's the situation. Can you help me out? Just, Sergio's like, 
in the back seat the guy doesn't know he's like i really was on my way so 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 I, you know i he overheard I, he was going to four media yeah. i actually i actually i actually like, oh, I, media i'll take you he, he, he actually said he was willing to take me for free but i still gave him 50 because i was like he just helped me out and i actually had him drop me off like i don't know maybe five blocks away where i could buy a charger and then i go to the freaking cvs or whatever it is they had the charger piece without the head. And I'm like, all right, what the heck's going bro, on That is here? such a CVS move. Bro, That's I'm like- an Apple move, bro. bro you I'm like, me? I bought oh, a fucking $1,600 iPhone. Oh. Fuck this company. And they didn't give me a fucking block. They don't give you the brick. So, yeah. so that, I, I, here's what's funny. And they say it's for environmental reasons. Yo, I fuck this yourself. On, yo, say this on a TikTok. Take this clip. Well, here's what's funny. already. Here's I what's funny. Need to post here's it. what's fuck crazy. This phone. I found a <laughs> diff- here's what's, here's Steve job sucks. Here's what's he, <laughs> Steve Jobs rolling. One in second. The grave. This is a, this is an actual this sales is, tactic. So he drops joke. me off. He it's drops me off at a, like a CVS or whatever. There's another sheriff or cop or what I don't know whatever they're they're called here. Another one. Okay. And I learned my lesson from this last guy. I just approached him incorrectly. Right. So I was like, all right, I got to box this guy in. I was like, dude. I got to fuck him up. No, 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 no. I don't mean box like this. I don't mean box. I, I just, I changed up my approach. I was like, hey, man, you know, uh, I know you're a cop, so you're always willing to help out. Boom. Ooh, you put him in an identity frame. Gil. Yeah. So now he's like, he's like, damn, sure. Yeah. What's your problem? I was like, dude, you know, here's the situation. I had to freaking hitchhike my, hitchhike my way here. I have no blah, blah, blah. All I need is your phone for like 30 seconds. You could even dial it yourself. I just want to call my girlfriend real quick. And I want to call, I want to let you know. That's what she sent you a text. Dude, Denise literally called me, and I'm like, how are you communicating with Sergio? It was through a cop's if phone. phone is, if his it phone was is through dead. a like, cop's how te- how phone. How do you know? And, and she, uh, she texts me back, stranger. Yeah. <laughs> like like yeah, a yeah, stranger. Yeah. 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 So the, uh, long story short, the cop lets me call Denise, who then lets who then uh, calls a lift for me, and uh, maybe I'll be here. But learn my lesson, you know? The, wow. I used to not believe this shit. But it's but you saw the message, right? <laughs> Here's the text. Hey Joel, it's Denise. Hey, everything okay? Sergio's phone died. Oh, haha. Tell him to come to the hotel. <laughs> He's not there. Can you tell him to come up? He's not there. Where is he? <laughs> I'll pick him up. He called a stranger. <laughs> Literally hitched hike. Hitch hike from one location to a different location. Wow. I can I mean, never live. I would live your life in anxiety, my friend. Yeah. That's all I have to say. I don't know. It's just like, look, since you're giving us such great advice, bro, Sergio, I don't know if you know how we end these things, bro, but like we end them with a nice fortune cookie, juicy piece of advice, something that you could just crack open, give to someone five to 10 years younger than you, your younger self, that would just fucking change the way that their entire life went forever. What would you give them? Hmm. Both of us or just me? You could do both. Joel, Joel can have another one. Are you, are you le- gonna seriously leave me out at the end i mean you had your you had your fortune cookie all right, all right. I'll, I'll 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 end it off but i wasn't i was more like serious you're, you're more episode. mature oh, okay now no i'm now. i'm at, i feel less mature today <laughs> <laughs> so I feel more just like so does going. it have to be like a fortune cookie type of thing or can no, i just no, no. make a you statement, can make no, a statement. statement. it can all be right. a long fortune cookie <laughs> most people go about their life like genuinely speaking a wandering like they're just like floating through life. They have no purpose, no goal, no anything, right? And then they tell themselves they want all these things and they never get these things because they've made it a want. But life is interesting because it'll never give you what you want. It'll only give you what you must have. It's a need. I need this. We just get what we need. And so step one is identify what you need so you're not a wandering generality. And number two, make it an actual need not a want and that's that's you having that internal conversation with yourself of like hey am i really about this because the world's gonna test you the world's when you the moment you put that stake in the ground and you say hey i want i need this this is going to happen like you burn the bridges there's no other option i must have this the moment you make that decision i promise you the world's gonna start throwing shit your way because it's, it's like this is term in new york like, i'm gonna test your gangster it's true they're gonna test how about it you actually are you've made that claim you say, I need this. But the moment you make that claim, you're going to start getting fires, issues, fires, issues. But if you just walk around with a knowing, a confidence, uh, understanding that it's going to be okay, it's going to work out because you've made that decision. You part, you've like made that, put that stake in the ground, it's decided. And the moment you make that decision, it's going to happen no matter what. Nothing's going to stop you. Independent of what's in front of you, it's just going to happen. The moment you make that decision, it's going to work out. Now the question becomes, well, if you know what's going to happen, how do you deal with the natural anxieties and issues that just inevitably come, right? You mentioned the roller coaster earlier. 
the reason I love roller coasters, when I was younger, I used to be afraid of them. And then I started understanding that the, 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 life is like a roller coaster because, you know, most nine times out of 10, ten people get inside roller coasters and they're freaking excited about it. It's like fun, right? But the roller coaster is only fun because you know two or three minutes later you're going to live. It's going to be perfectly fine. So when you're on that roller coaster, you're walking around with a knowingness, right? Like a confidence. Like it's going to be perfectly okay. You need to take mm. that same principle to life. Like walk around with a knowingness, a confidence that two or three years from now, it's going to be okay, which ena enables you to enjoy the ups and the inevitable downs that are just going to come. As, but the key is, you know, you'll be fine. Because if I promised, if I told you, hey, in two or three years, you're going to go through, you're going to go through hell for the next two years, but three years from now, you're going to get everything you've ever freaking wanted in life. Would you do it? Yeah. No, you're, I mean, that was like what we were talking about earlier with crypto, you know, it's like, there's ups and fucking downs, but macro belief, I believe in this shit. You know what I mean? Boom. So it's like, that's what you know, final words. That was Close that us was, out. Take us amazing. home. You want to just leave it at that or you want to? I'll give you guys a little bit of a different ending compared to last time. Last time I talked a lot about like manhood and um, kind of like the spiritual inner game, but I want to give you guys my One of your pieces of final <clears throat> advice last time, and this is just really recollecting back was everyone should have a uh, psychiatrist therapist therapist yeah. sorry yeah. at least at one point in their lives everyone should just work through <clears throat> and it, we don't have to go into that right now but just to, to loop full circle on that everyone should work on their inner game that's really all that that boils down to a lot of us um, a lot of us live our lives, not just a wandering generality, but also influenced by the things that affected us as children. And until we work through those things, we are subconsciously slaves in a way to those things. And until we actually process those experiences, we won't ever be free from them. So that's why I believe in, in, in therapy. Um, as far as like what I wanted to end on today, I wanted to go more business route. I wanted to give everyone my four principles of success. Number one, you have to show up and take massive action. The biggest reason why most people fail has nothing to do with the tactics, has nothing to do with the strategies, has nothing to do with the knowledge. It has everything to do with the fact that they are not taking step one because they are focused on steps eight, nine, and 10. Principle number two, you have to go all in. If you have a plan B and a plan C, you've already lost. If you're one foot in, one foot out, you're never going to make it. Even if you're all in, business is already hard. Business is already extremely difficult. So if you're one foot in, one foot out, you're going to get destroyed. Principle number three, you have to take ownership at the end of the day. This is your life, your success, your freedom. It's not mine. It's not Sergio's, it's not Andrew's, it's not Eddie's. It's yours. Yet most people that become entrepreneurs look for so much guidance. They look for so much leadership that they never develop the leadership and the guidance for themselves. And I tell all of my, all of our clients at the end of the day, if you become your own coach through this whole experience, then you will have truly succeeded. Because at the end of the day, it's up to you to go out and take the shot, not up to me. So besides that, principle number four, I don't mean this one literally, but I really mean it metaphorically. You have to be willing to win or die like your life depends on it. Are you truly doing everything in your power to win? I believe most people are not. Most people say they want the success. Most people say they want to win. Most people say they want to build a big business, but they want only the upside without the downside. So principle number four, be willing to win or die. And to make it very clear, I don't, I don't mean it literally, but metaphorically, you have to be willing to do whatever it takes and uh, yeah, those are my four principles. Love it, baby. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome, baby. <laughs>
the way he said baby was on him. <laughs> that was yeah. hilarious. That was, that was not expected at the end. I was in chill mode. I was like, I loved back, it. recline. I loved it. So uh, if people want to like follow you guys, you no, know, they connect don't, more. They can't want to. They have to. If they, they need, need you don't to. get what you if want in life. To. You get what you must have. If, the world's not a crazy enough place, guys. If people must have a follow button press on you guys, they have to look up at official Joel Kaplan on Instagram, TikTok at official Sergio Tavares. Is that Ser- your name? Yep, Sergio Tavares. On Instagram. Yep. I got my, change it? my Instagram Dude, got his hacked. His Instagram got Yo, hacked. His Around Instagram time, got hacked founders, and turned was... into a lib- a political I liberal. Sh- I can't. Like, what is it? Let me unfollow yeah. it. And they verified it. I they gave they it a blue tick. It? They Stop. they verified my account. And it's like a it's like a California like politician. Uh, yeah. Uh, Democratic yep. page. Yep. So what is it? What's up? What's up? So, uh, the new one is official. Sergio. No, no, what's t- the old one? Uh, the one on Serge Tavares or something, right? S E R G. No, no but they changed the name. Yeah, they changed the name. I think they changed the name. Yeah, they changed. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they definitely no, they, changed the name. It was, so it was weird, funny because around the time of agency founders, I was I was helping with promo stuff, obviously, yeah, they had and to. I was trying to tag you, and I and it was still called Serge Tavares, but the fucking page was like starting to become the political page. I know, I was bro. Like, I know. I was like, what the I got fuck a whole is bunch this? of people telling me, "Hey, so you are getting into politics?" I was like, "No, sir." <laughs> <laughs> at <laughs> official Joel Kaplan. Sergio at official. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, this is Sergio. <laughs> no, no, that that's part of our content. I know, I know, I know. It's just funny. Uh, yeah, but at uh, official. Joel Kaplan at official Sergio Sergio Tavares Tavares. with a Z. It'll be in the description. People can find it. People people will be able to to click a button. Dude, they turn me to they turn me to a a Californian liberal, like a football, and I don't lean on either side, guys. But like a politician, I'm the least politician guy in the world. (laughs) Like I don't even know. Like I don't even read books. I don't even read books, bro. Um, and then they started DMing people, and I was like, all right. Like now, I gotta take it down. Welcome yeah. to my world, bro. I'm sure no, you, you get too. a you get a ton, dude. You get a ton. Fake I, accounts I have from like both. Fake accounts. Yeah, I've had people send 50k to fake accounts. Let yeah, that, let that sink in. That sucks. I would feel so bad, bro. I, I let go. I stopped worrying about it. We used to pay this company called Takedown something, where they would take down people that would rip your course and upload it. I stopped paying them. I'm like, dude. It's like back to that conversation of me getting robbed. Exactly. It's like the weight of it is. Far you know, you want to know how many people we've had that ripped our course and then signed up for our mentorship? Yeah, all the time. So many. I was like, this free marketing, sure. baby. Yeah, for like sure. I want. If you want to rip the course, go ahead, rip it. But we'll see you in like a year. Yeah, when you actually need our help. <laughs> when you uh, need, our help. You need yeah. the access. Last plug. Go. Yeah. Watermelon.com. Watermelon.com. There we go. Com. Are they seedless though? Yeah, of course. Of course. You can, you can not even the white the, seeds. That was yeah. not a but, seed. But that was a fucked take, up question. Do don't, they ever take, ask, don't ever ask that question. Ever. Do they take the Lebanon principle, slice it up, put it in your face? No, no, you don't need to because every watermelon is prime. Per, yeah, it's, it's 10 out of 10. Do you need a check. Or your money back plus a $1,000 check in the, the mail. Thanks again, guys, for Facts, fucking making 100%. this happen. Miami, Denver, in Atlanta. Thank you so much, Let's bro. Let's go. Appreciate Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Four Media Uncut podcast. If you want to work with us, learn with us, or even join the team and be a part of what we're doing at Four Media Marketing, just go to our website. It's fourmedia.marketing, no.com, no.net, dot marketing, because that's all we do around here. And most importantly, share this with a friend wherever you're listening to or watching this on. Please hit that share button, send it over to a friend, someone else that you think will get value out of this. It would mean the world to us. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like this video and comment down below any suggestions for future guests. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, please rate this five stars and leave us a review there. That helps us tremendously in the algorithm world. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next episode of 4Media Uncut Podcasts.